Muscular Development presents Global Muscle Radio with your host, Giles Thomas. Joined by his co-host, AJ. From the Pump Media Studios, this podcast is sponsored by High Tech Pharmaceuticals. Get ready for Global Muscle Radio. And welcome back to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Media Studios with me, your host, Charles Thomas. And I'm joined by AJ Hitman Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> this episode is jam packed. We got a lot of good people in this episode. There's a lot of jam. <laughs> by the way, you told me something on the way here. Oh, God, what now? You're finished with girls in the industry. 100%. What does that mean and why? Uh, oh, God. Um, Because <laughs> you're almost like, AJ. Well, let's not be hasty now. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that, but in hindsight. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. Also, to all the um, all to, to all the Thai ladies, no more dick pics, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this there's a lot of trolling among people in this industry. Let's but, not diss the ladies too much. No, no. But when we are in position of power in this industry. Are we? You get a lot of stupid um, people sucking up just to be part of something. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, no. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Isn't it annoying? They start following you just because they want to be uh, on the show uh, yeah, and you well, help promote them well, or what? AJ, they don't always have bad intent. Maybe, maybe they just think I'm really, really cool. You're the one who told me that you don't want to have anything more to do with them. Such a snitch. So why? Well, so I'm now th- you change your opinion after two minutes in the car? Guys, uh, AJ, Chris, mm. I, ha- I can be known to have an occasional hissy fit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, can- I have been known to be in a little bit of a diva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah Chris, you know, do you I'm- agree? Yep, he's shaking his head. <sighs> can't believe you're ganging up on it's me. He's got there. a new table, can't see him over there, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, what were we talking about? I have no idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, well, uh, well, just, I need a break. You need a break? I need a break because I'm, well, you know. <laughs> I need a break. It's, uh, it's been a busy few months. <laughs> but you're going to Romania now, aren't you? Or are you in Romania right now, or what's the deal? Am I in Romania right I'm now? I'm not so sure. If, are you in Bucharest? Pretty what? sure I'm in the Bronx. <laughs> sorry, Wigan. Wigan. Why? <laughs> Because no, you're going to Romania now, aren't you? Uh, yes, so uh, well, I was going to stay, but I might Romania. <laughs> sorry, terrible, no, but terrible. that wasn't even the right context. Sorry. Because you're going to judge the show, or what's I'm the deal here? Judging? I don't like judging. I've what? tried judging. I've Have tried, you? I've tried judging. Wellness. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I've judged wellness. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say no. Yes, I've judged wellness. I've judged uh, for the uh, pro league. I've ju- in the amateurs. I've judged uh, independent pro shows in Norway, Larvik, yeah, 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 Larvik, yeah, yeah. and Oslo. Yeah. Oslo in your neck say, say, in your, a, no. say a Norwegian name for the people in, at home. In your neck of the woods? Say uh, Geir Hansen. What? Is that? Yeah. Oh, a lovely bloke. Yeah, yeah, say it. Is that a bloke? Yeah, it's a, a guy. It's a guy. Guy. I don't even. I can't even. Try to pronounce it. Geir Hansen. Guy Hansen. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty... <laughs> that's... Do you remember Hansen. that Hansen? Do you remember Hansen? The blonde girl voice <laughs> slash girls. Hansen. Handsome, yeah. The no, we're not talking about Thai girls again. No, 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 no. no. The Umbat brothers, isn't it? Yeah. It's very, very, very random conversation. Today. There's some small shows been going on. A little bit late to the party, of course, but there was a show in Italy, weren't there? Yes, yes, fantastic show. Actually. Yamamoto. Uh... The Yamamoto Pro Cup, I believe. The the prize money looked pretty. Was it seventy five or seventy thousand US dollars overall throughout the classes? Because sadly, the pr- you know on my stories, mm. I, I'm I'm saying the pride of the UK when I put Nathan always when I put in Nathan, I promote a lot of Nathan the Ash in my stories. Correct. Because all my stories on AJ, I don't even know what the hell my it probably is. Yeah. I promote athletes 24-7, and I troll also a little bit with personal <laughs> stories. You see that kid that I took to the ghetto when he posted and he got robbed? Yes, I did, yeah. yes, yes. So you can yes. watch my stories, AJ Kayla Robert and, and Giles Tiger underscore. Yeah. Yeah, my yeah, stories yeah. are better than your stories. Chris, do you agree? Nope. Nope. What, to what? So, <laughs> what, so, what, 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 what? Do you know the effort I put into my stories? Me, I sit every morning, the cat jumps up, Mm. The fat orange cat, and he mm. squishes himself side, and we sit there, and I have my coffee, and I, I put a lot of effort into my stories. Age, I resent that. So that put in Nathan. I put in the pride of Li- of the UK, Nathan the Asher. L- pride of Liverpool. I get so many people saying he's not because you can. Because you, <laughs> you, what, what? Well, you can answer your stories. 
They yeah, but what, they hate when I'm saying the pride of the UK. What, and do, do they do they set what because he's from Jamaica or because he's not? No, because they just hate us in the Asia. Oh, he's got a lot of haters. I'm not sure why. Well, we've talked about this before. Do you think he's got? A, well, uh, well, no, he's, he's well, he's very, very good. He's I don't. I'm saying I get a lot of people hating all my stories when I put in the pride of. Right in front, they say okay. he's not the pride of the. What world. is it? Is it like Flex Lewis? They say or or Luke Sandow? Probably or Luke yeah, Sandow. Luke Sandow. Because he's got a big fan base. Isn't he's he? got a big fan base. The Redcon one and all this. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, so he went to Italy. Yeah. Because he didn't uh, do the Olympia. He wasn't allowed to do the Olympia. Wasn't, why wasn't he allowed to do Olympia? Uh, no, he was allowed to do Olympia. We're talking about. No, he was allowed to do Olympia, but I'd, um, something with his. Oh, I, I didn't. To be honest, I didn't really follow it that much. He was, there was some court case going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, Thank God he oh. did get no prison time. Yeah, he's been dealt with now. He's fine. He's, um, and he's all cleared. Uh, yes, no, nothing bad happened. Just some little slap on the wrist. Yeah, well, it's not, I don't even want to go into that because no. it's, it's done with them. So he competed in Italy. Yes. And he could have beat Roly. Do you think so? He was a very good conditioning. No. Very good no, conditioning. I, I, I agree with the placing. And Lucas also was looking very good. Lucas Osladl from the Czech Republic was in third, who got eighth place at the Olympia. He looked fantastic. You really but I think Roly would look that good. Yeah, Roly looked, Roly looked probably 10% better than he did at the Olympia. Yeah, that wasn't that good but a it, look. But to me, it wasn't as fantastic as when they did the Prague. But I think of both, course not. But no, both Nathan and Roly, for me, Looked better when they both did Prague last year, and that's when Nathan really felt that he beat Roly. He really maintains today, to, to this day, that he beat Roly there. But that was Roly at his absolute best as well. So that's a pretty big claim to make. Mm. And they're all training partners, so it's probably a bit of an. All- In fact, Nathan, Nathan's pro debut was at the 2016 Body Power Pro. And that's when um, he. It, I mean, that was very. That was a very close battle as yeah, well yeah, between yeah. Nathan and Roly. I was there. I was sat with Roddy Coleman. Mm. And, it, and you know what? The only, in fact, the only person I think because Roly, um, Roly, uh, Ronnie, was he was he was on his Instagram. Mm. His Instagram, and I said to him, I said, "Check this new kid out, Nathan Diasha. <sighs> Check him out." And he kind of looked up like that, and he looked at him and he went, and he just nodded like that, and then just looked back at his phone. I'm gave, a, gave a glance to Roly, and, and he didn't watch any of the rest of the show. I'm a real big Nathan the Asher fan. Yeah. Always been. And we'll all well. Do you think, we'll, he's, do you think he's progressed this year? Come on. No. Yeah. What about his British Grand Prix look? Fantastic condition. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. And I think he's made... Um, I, I, I don't really want to consider the other looks he had. Um, but I, Vancouver. I, I, but AJ, AJ, honestly, no, Vancouver, he didn't look very good. He didn't look good. Now, I think had he beat him fair and square there. But I think, yeah, um, yeah. I think the stress of those, those, those issues going on, it has to have an effect on a person's physique. I, I don't care what you say, no matter how much you feel like it's bouncing off you, it, that is gonna, that's going to hurt your, your prep, everything, every aspect mm. of your body. So it's going to reflect in your physique. But I see at least a lot more, and not that 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 matters, but a lot family pictures at least. You remember there's a lot of family with him and Nate now. You see his kids more. In, good. You, you good. Know what I mean, it's a good, well, like, good vibe going. Well, on. the fact that he actually battled through and kind of competed anyway, and still uh, fulfills obligations, mm. and he didn't just pull out a show. No, 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 no. You see these bodybuilders, and they pull out of shows for. I mean, we've heard it, silly excuses and stuff. But and he's um, also started as a prep coach now. I think. Remember? Oh, was he? Yeah. Oh, all bodybuilders are doing that though. Yeah, but I he's doing more with, professionally. Is he? Yeah, it's, you don't watch his stories. Yeah, but obviously. a lot of these, I don't. No, I, no I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, take Nathan out of it. Yeah. Every day I see bodybuilders, even pro bodybuilders, that are all because they've stepped on stage. It doesn't necessarily mean that you can have that. Because a lot of these, a lot of the, the modern trend in bodybuilding today is from your first show you have a coach. Yeah. I speak to <laughs> bikini girls. Um, and a lot no, of no, DM. Like, they talk to, they message me. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> no but, um, and a lot of them, they like, oh, my prep coach, it's like, how many shows is it? Oh, it's my first show. Mm. And they're like, they're, they're doing check-in pictures like every other day and stuff. I'm thinking, do you, do you kind of look kind of normal? You don't really look, I don't understand. Like when I can, back in my day when I competed, I, I didn't have a prep coach. I did everything myself. And I think you need to learn your body. And in fact, I've written in my MD Muscle Boss column this month, I actually made a pretty bold statement that they didn't edit out. Do you know what I said? No. Do you know what I said? No. I said uh, the majority, I'm not saying all of them, but I felt that the majority of prep coaches are full of shite. Full of shit? Shite. It's not like shit with an E on the end. There's a lot of scam artists stealing money. No, I just don't. I just don't and I think if you, 
trial and error and, and learning your own body is like I've, I've spoke to people who've tried to go it alone after having a prep coach say on a third or fourth show and they don't have a clue because they've not actually questioned any of the information they've been given or any of the advice they've been given so they just follow it to the letter but they don't actually but what, my point is when you compete yourself and you prep yourself you learn like like the one time I took diuretics what happened I nearly died I couldn't train for six weeks actually I couldn't I, my body was absolutely depleted 12 weeks of prep went down the toilet literally down the toilet we mm. uh, it like literally in a few hours I mean I went from like, probably my best shape of my of my life at that point to like my body whole body just I just looked terrible I looked terrible so anyway it's like but I had to learn that myself I had to learn that myself mm. but I knew that wasn't the right thing for me after that so my point is I just I just think prep. I think try it alone. Try it. Go and try and learn. There's there's enough. You can get enough access to enough information. You're right. I'm just saying to to Chris. <clears throat> I'm trying to help Nate and the Ashes money go up, and Giles uses ten minutes to make it go down. Like come <laughs> no, on, I'm not, I'm no, 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 I'm, <laughs> no. But I'm just you, you got on the subject of prep coaches, and I just I just feel like just. I mean, I've spoke to some pro bodybuilders, and you actually speak to them about technical diet stuff. Some of them are absolutely clueless. They're mm. basically people with good genetics who've been guided by coaches the whole way. So I don't think you need... You, you've got to do something. Do some shows by yourself, please. So people go to Nathan the Asher if you want a prep coach. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not sure Nathan will be great, but it's like it doesn't necessarily mean just because someone stepped on stage. Like I've seen people who've done one local show and the next thing they're a prep coach. It's like... And then they're, they're talking in philosophical quotes and uh, speaking to their people. And I just think, guys, calm down. Also in Italy... That's my rant. Who was the most beautiful bikini girl in the world you met in, at Olympia? Who, who was that? I uh, see what you mean now. She won the Italy Pro, L'Oreal Chaparros. I, uh, AJ, you, what, what do I say oh, about... Yeah, yeah. What's what my, a woman. No, no, just talk about my, my, my views on bikini girls. Like, you the, hate bikini. You think bikini is absolutely shit, you told me before no, the show. No, 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 be honest. Speak your truth, AJ. You said it's very feminine and you're not into bikini. I didn't say that. <laughs> okay, you, did. you said you are starting to like it more. Yeah. Because you see how hard the athletes work. Oh, come on, AJ. Stop trolling! <laughs> Stop it! No, no. My point is, um, yeah, Laura Lee Chapados. Ah, uh, uh, Chapados. I, I was at the I was at the gala dinner at the Olympia, yeah. <clears throat> and um, I was went over and I was talking talking to Dan Solomon and uh, just talking about how we felt about the Olympia, mm. and then this kind of this, this vision sold out Olympia by the way on Saturday. Yeah, it was fantastic. Just for really people good. at home, it was sold. Out on Saturday. Brilliant. What a great production. Really good. I think Dan should be really, really proud of what he's achieved mm. there. Did you, did you go, Giles? I did, AJ. I Chris. <sighs> AJ, did you, did you go? I'm not uh... supposed to leave without you. AJ was okay. trolling at home. Oh. How, many, how many texts did I, how many videos did I send you, though? Did I keep you happy? Back to Lori Chapados. Yes. Oh, yeah, she won Italy. Okay, wow. so, wow. When you met her. Okay. My, What's AJ, so special AJ. about Lori? Didn't see it before. You didn't I mean, see she's it? a very pretty one, very. But everyone like, oh, amazing. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, because she came out. I didn't realize how tall she was. And when you see her in the flesh and you meet her face to face, I'll be honest, that my legs were trembling a bit. <laughs> Your legs. No, are seriously, my, I, I, I very rarely does that happen when you meet someone and like, <gasps> you actually get like butterflies. And I would because I just turned and I wasn't expecting. I was like, and she's talking to you. I only talking a couple of minutes, just you know, chatting about whatever mm. the weather, and. Um, and I said, oh, I didn't realize how tall you were. And, uh, and like, she, and then she kind of just like walked off, like, <laughs> you know, off on this cloud, you know. Uh, that, with it. I just, and I was just like, wow, I didn't expect to feel that. You felt touch. She touched uh, you a little bit. No, she didn't touch me. Not physically. No, no, but emotionally, phys like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She touched yeah. my soul. Yeah. <laughs> in the classic class in Italy, mm -hmm. a, a really intense battle. Like, very surprisingly. Alex Cobanero and Brion. Classic. Classic, yeah. A very men's physique. No, I did not say men's physique. No. Okay, I'm trolling. I know you want your board shorts back on, but I'm just talking. <laughs> no, classic physique. Yeah. Alex oh, yes, Brion was. barely beat Alex Cobanero in it Italy. Was. I saw Alex Cobanero at the Olympia, and I saw him in the pre-judging. He switched from which class to what class? 212. Correct. 212 to classic. And I saw him, and I was like, oh, he didn't stand out as much as I thought he would. Mm. And then I saw him at the night show, and I was really impressed with him. You were. I just, I was really, I was like, wow, this guy is seriously good. Mm -hmm. So then I saw him at the in Italy, and for someone that is a two-time Olympia champion, and I thought could have won, could have won. I thought I felt like he won the night show at the Olympia, so he could have mm. been, a, you know, technically a three-time Olympia champion. But when um, 
when I saw them together, I couldn't decide who was going to win. And uh, do you think Brion looked better than he did in Italy? That he did it. Do you think he looked better in Italy than he did at the Olympia? Again, as the camera work was done by Stevie Wonder for the Olympia, so people <laughs> at home have no idea. Yeah, yeah. No. I think Brion. Um, <laughs> do you know what Brion? It was something going on at the Olympia. It's like the night show. I, I think he felt I had too much color on. Too much tan. Okay. I think it held. It was a little bit too dark. Yeah, it was too dark. I've never actually. It's been a long time since you see that. You know, where you see someone looks too dark. And who's who? Where is Alex Comanero prepping right now? Or who is he training with right now? I haven't a clue. Who is the greatest? I call it Brit, greatest British bodybuilder in the two twelve class of all time. Flex Lewis. So he's training with Brandao and oh, really? Flex oh. Lewis in the Dragon Slayer. This is news because Flex Lewis messaged uh, myself the other day and he said, Charles, I've got some news for you. Mm. 20, is he 26 now? Uh, Rafael Brandao from uh, Brazil. Yeah. Uh, one of the real rising up and comers. Six mm. foot one, 250 pounds. He's had a pretty good season this year. Decent. Could have been better. A decent season. But, you know, this guy, I remember seeing him at the San Marino 2017 and he took eighth place. He was in first call out with Brandon Curry. Uh, Cedric McMillan, Hadi Shupan. So this guy is, he's, you know, Tim Budestein. This guy is really, really good. Mm. And he was like 24, 20. It was, a year and a, it was a year out of the juniors by this point. So he's really like someone that is someone to keep an eye on. He's tall, wide, great condition, great symmetry. So anyway, he's moved to uh, Florida for six months to be yep. trained, training with uh, John Delarosa and Flex Lewis. So it's going to be really interesting. Yeah, so we can see if he can really, because I mean, if that guy can make a big leap up. He's learning English too. So, yeah, but learning English. We're actually going to get him on in about three or four months' time once he's really competent with English. I saw him at the Olympia and he's, uh, we did a little video and stuff. How was that? Yeah, he's good. He was a very, very friendly guy. He, like, he's, hey, bro, you know. <laughs> he, knows, he knows how to say bro in English. So we had the lovely Laurie winning bikini. We had Rolly Rinko the Freak winning open. And we <laughs> Lori Chapatos. Lori. <laughs> now don't say something stupid now. You can DM me. Oi, 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 oi. You're and the only one. You, you, the rest. Sorry. Sorry. Well, if Linda, uh, well, Linda, maybe maybe a few. You with Linda Murray DM you, you would say yes. Do you know what she was on my flight? <laughs> no, she was on my flight from um, Vegas to LA, and she was. It was very. We we're all a bit tired. Mm. I didn't say hello to her. I feel really bad. And she was collecting her luggage, and I, I'd lost. I was trying to find mine, and I, 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 I pretended not to see her. I feel really oh. bad because I love Linda. I know, but she looked a bit grumpy and tired, and we because it's you know. That Sunday when everyone's traveling back, everyone's just like, you know, because it's so intense, the Olympia. Mm. You're, you're, you're existing on four hours sleep. It's very, it's action packed. There's a lot going on. So on the Sunday, everyone is just like, uh, like at the Superstar Seminar on the Sunday, it's very, everyone's kind of just like, uh, you had it. we're all dying, you know? Men's physique, who won? Kiki. And he's on the show today. Yes, he is. Okay, yeah, okay. So we're going to hear from him. Yeah, there's a guy on the rise. Uh, fifth place in the New York Pro to sixth place at the Olympia. And he won the Yamamoto Pro Cup. What a what a result. And yeah. To me, I think he had the best men's physique look in the Olympia. I'm not feeling this new British word, leveling up. It's such corny. That's actually two words. Yeah, but this is some new thing. It's on the rise. I heard it's leveling up. Who's made this? Well, I think it's better than let's go. No, 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 no. no. Let's go. That means let's go. Leveling up. Oh, like, like this morning when I wanted you gone by a certain time. At the house. Yeah. He was like, let's let. And then I heard AJ, it somebody. we gone by 12. Quarter past. We got to level up. Nah, like, come on. <laughs> is that better than let's go? Chris, I'm sorry we were late today. Chris, let's go or leveling up. I know there's another saying that uh, was used in the podcast 35 maybe. Uh, and Giles used extensively the word legit. Oh, that's good. Come, I'm being a bit more of a G nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> AJ, Legit. I'm single. I'm single. AJ, I'm yeah, single. You're sing I'm, I'm not ready to mingle. Yes, you are. And I'm a bit more of a G. I'm feeling a bit more of a... I'm you, I feel like I'm balling a but bit But you now. can't be a G and you're not ready to mingle. You can't be a G with a collar like that. Put it back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Come on now. Am I looking a bit Harry Hill? For the British viewers, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Hit Mr. Hitman. Men's physique there. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, what else? Show yeah. Who do we have on the show? That Oh my god, I can't keep count of everyone. So we have the Rising Phoenix Suns. It's been a month now, but yeah, it is what it is. Rising Phoenix Social Pro Show. Oh, it was weeks before the Olympia, wasn't it? Week before the Olympia. And then the announcement at the Olympia. Oh, it, yes. So it's yes, official. Yes. Female bodybuilding is definitely on the rise. Yeah. Uh, the Miss Olympia is coming back to the Olympia. So I think that's a really good, um, really good addition. Because 
but female bodybuilders took a real resurgence, mainly through uh, Jake Wood and the Wings of Strength. Mm. And uh, I feel sorry if I've left any names out there. I just I always know Jake Wood, Tim Gardner, mm. uh, responsible for bringing it back to the Chicago Pro. I spoke to the Toronto show, ooh, Toronto Pro promoter as well. Yeah, and he he, he we had a little chat on the high tech. Uh, the high tech pharmaceutical stand, mm. and he was saying, he says, he was, we had a chat, and he said, oh, I'd love you to come out to the show. And, oh, uh, Toronto. Yeah, Toronto. And um, he said, I went to Toronto when I was 15. To do what? Well, I was backpacking around America oh, and sorry. Canada. That's, that's, you and know, that's a very white thing, by the do way. Do you want to know Backpacking. It's, backpacking. So trolling. Weird. I was trolling. Yeah, that's I was correct. Tro- I was trolling around the East Coast. And do you know what? My, my, my training partner, he was 21. Hitchhiking. And do you know what he was trying to encourage me to do, AJ? No. He wanted me to. Shouldn't say. Sell your no. You uh, want me to buy smuggle. You want me to buy, not sell. Buy <laughs> buy some marijuana. No. Buy what? Do what? Buy some um. Man you, love. Not man love. The other one. Some lady love. Lady love. He was a. Pimp. He want, basically wanted me to lose my virginity to a prostitute. You were you were still a virgin at fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're still a virgin. You're still a virgin. Uh, I'm the only married man in this room. No, that's true. That's true. That's well, true. we've never met her. Yeah, we have. <laughs> I pop media Phil Heath. She was oh, there. I said hello. Oh, you oh. did not see her, I think. I think I was his sister. <laughs> you said it was yeah. his wife. Like, Come on, pretend you're my wife. My sister was on the doors. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, 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 yeah. So he wanted me to um, buy sex. Pop my cherry to a fifth. To a to it, and I was like, and this was like real. Did you? And he, I remember, I remember the phrase he used. He goes, "Go on, go on, Giles, dip your wick, dip your wick, dip your wick." Yeah. So anyway, I, I didn't. You, I don't believe you. I but, think uh, you say that so your girls won't o- stop DMing o- you. October 1991. <laughs> Michael Bolton. Yeah, you talked about that. Sisters, so you sisters, didn't do it. You were too scared. Sister, I was terrified. Why? I was 15. I don't and get, so? Street crawler. When well, you're 15, that's when you. Well, that was July. 1991 what, when I was 15 What I, did you call her? Street crawler? <laughs> but when I was Well October You know I uh, <laughs> Street crawler I gave my sister's uh, I gave my sister's best friend The best 26 seconds of her life Oh Fill us in I did <laughs> Fill me in <laughs> Anyway uh, yeah. back, to, back to bodybuilding But female bodybuilding Oh yeah sorry So we gonna First of all Ronix Phoenix Pro what, That's a that's hard name Can you give, Can't they get a better name on that What's it called You again? just need to get it right AJ Rising Phoenix Rising Phoenix It's very Not hard right, You've called it Rising Sun You've called it Phoenix Phoenix, Phoenix Nights <laughs> <laughs> you won't get that, will you? No, I don't know. Phoenix Knights? Nah. No. Phoenix Knights? Phoenix Knights? No. Ray Guy in the wheelchair? Mm-mm. What? Ray Vaughn. That's it, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I don't remember that. So the lovely Hella Trevino. British reference. Hella Trevino mm. beat a very good Margie V. Oh, yes, Margie. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think it was. Monique I, Jones third. Uh, no, no, it no, no, was no. Irene, Irene Anderson. Anderson. Very shocking. I saw Irene at the. Uh, the Not Olympics. shocking, but she. Sorry, onto another sub. Did you see the film? Get big, what's it called? It's not. I can't find it. Get uh, too big for the world. Too big for the world. Did you That's see it? it? It's like a big. Uh, it's, it was made like three years ago. I know, but did you see it? In full? No, because um, I tell you, uh, it was they had the cinematic uh, premiere at the cinema at the Orleans, mm. where they had the same cinema where they had bigger the the premiere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know what was I saying. Um, yes, and um, you know the chef, Trump's chef, the, with the big the arms. big arms. Yeah, it looks like Aaron Baker without the hair. Well, Aaron Baker's got no hair now. Nah, but back in the day. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, he was... Um, he looks he, exactly like Aaron Baker. When, well, not exactly, He must but. have people say, hey, Aaron Baker, can I have a photo? But he actually wears his chef's a little, whites. He little, wears little. his chef whites so people will identify him. A little bit corny, though. It is a bit corny. Come on now, bro. I know. Just put like a... If you go into the Olympia, you wear a chef outfit because you're a chef... Come on now. Thing bro. is, like... Buy a nice Versace shirt just, and just show your arms, just, bro. Those arms are ridiculous. Yeah, arms. but you can... They're like even, Brandon Curry size. You look even better in a Versace shirt than walking around your chef outfit. Possibly. <laughs> Come on, bro. Possibly. Ooh, that's like... Uh, ooh, Where's he going? On. Where's he going? Chris got home. No, so it was Irene off. in third. <laughs> Who was in fourth, though? Because Monique, my lovely Monique, she was fifth. Yeah, she was fifth, yeah. She Who was, was fifth. fourth? I can't remember. Me either. So, Hele won $50,000 yeah, yeah. and a Corvette. Yes. The, what that's... you call it? The Hellcat. The kitty cat. She calls it the Hellcat. The Hellcat. The Hellcat. That's what she's called it. And do you know what I saw? I saw a picture of her. And she got in. She got in the car after she'd won it. Yeah. And I remember thinking, "What? She's gonna get tan all over the seats because she's tanned up. She's tanned up. I, I hope she put a towel down on that lovely seat in that new car. Hundred was it? Hundred grand car? Fifty grand? Yeah, hundred. Fuck. Yeah. What's the most expensive? No, no, that we want to talk about because a lot of people don't have a car, so we don't want to brag about that. But anyway, Batmobile. Uh, I've had a Batmobile. 
Olympia. So they're back at Olympia. Yep. We're going to see Heller there. Yeah. Margie V. Mm-hmm. The great Yaxi. Yuxi- oh, Yaxinia. Yuxi- 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 Chris, uh, can we put on Yaxi? Yuxi- Come on. Chris left the studio. <laughs> he's left the building. You don't give a F no more. Elvis has he- left the building. He's getting paid, so you don't care about the product. Come on, bro. <laughs> Carry on, carry on. Carry on. Yaxina Oryx. What's yeah. her name? Yaxina Yaxi- Oryquen. Yeah, one Oryquen. of the real greats of female bodybuilding. She's, she's coming, back. coming back. She's coming back. At age, we don't, after 50, actually. 53. We need some new talent female How bodybuilding. How female oh. bodybuilders? They're like, they're, they're like at their prime in their mid to late 40s. I mean, like Dexter. Dexter just be, if he was a, if he was a female bodybuilder, he'd just be blended in. I know, I know, I know. It's amazing. But they get, these girls are still looking, they're actually at their best. So it's going to be great to have them back on stage again. Yes. 100%. At the Olympia. 100%. Uh, weren't we supposed to have a Global Muscle Brandon Curry tour about now, Giles? Yes, we were. Um, we originally had a tour planned just for the UK. Mm. <laughs> Don't want to give too much away. Yeah. Right after the, uh, it was four weeks after the Olympia. <coughs> and I did have a tour about 90, 85% booked. Yeah. But then I realized... Like uh, when Brandy uh, Brandy said um, in our last week's episode, she said about going two steps back to go one step forward. Yeah. I decided to take a step back, regroup, have more time to organize it and make it bigger and better. I, I can't actually say right now 100% whether how I want it to be will exactly, it will be as it I want it to be. But um, let's just say we'll be back in January. The tour will be back in January. It'll be longer and it might not just be the UK. <laughs> so it will be the Brandon Curry tour. It will be in January. In January, yeah. And most likely it will be, part of it will be in the UK. Oh. <laughs> well, the, let's just say the UK bit is fully booked now. But we might go somewhere else. Possibly. Possibly. Na, 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 like speaking of pizza pie that's spe- the morning. Speaking, <laughs> speaking, you know what? I'm a little bit dis- I'm a little bit disappointed by bodybuilding fans mm. in America, especially in America. Okay. Have you seen the beautiful Iranian fans? How they? Oh re- wow! Middle East. S- Tell you what, there's Middle some East. De- there are some Middle dedicated Eastern people. De- wow. There are some dedicated fans there. Dedicated. Middle Eastern are so, why are there so good people when it comes to following bodybuilding? I mean, the why? Lo- I just the love that say Big Rami, um, Kamal. Like I've seen stuff where he's been to Libya and they've had parties in the streets. They've been having uh, like these. Had he's met the president. They've had. They've been given national awards. You know that that the love and the appreciation for bodybuilding in those countries, in the Middle Eastern countries. Now you've seen the rise of Kuwait and oxygen and the support and the level of like. Um, it's not like that in the UK. I was surprised. In UK is a lot better than Norway. You remember the beginning? I was oh, like, wow. There's a great British bodybuilding scene. Great. <laughs> not nothing close to what's in Iran. No, but yeah, but those guys are like hailed as here. I, I know, but it's not like that here. I remember there was a guy called Eli Hanna who competed in Naba. Okay. And uh, and I heard like they were having like street processions, like literally like um, like parades, like in literally they paraded through the streets. Uh, that was Israel. In the Israel, okay, yeah, 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 that was Israel. Um, he put all this weird shit in his arms, and um, <laughs> no, he did early on. He, he was very good, and then he just his physique went really weird. Okay. But he was like, you know, these when they win like a Mister Universe or a big title, or they do or, like someone like Hadi Shupan wins the People's Champion Award, or they do you know he got third at the Olympia. I mean. C- Chris, can we go to his uh, Instagram there and we'll pull up some of the, the footage because this went up, there's one video went up today. You I think don't we'll see they're reacting to Luke Sando like that, that's for sure. Well, you don't know, maybe this Jim. Maybe. We were there very well, okay. Yeah, look at this. Press that. Like, that is, that's, I mean, there's several videos of like this wow. of Hadi Shupan of like the love. And look at this. This is like a soccer player, like Messi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they have on the buses, you know, on the buses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the World Cup. When the win, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Phil Heath, Phil Heath, this makes me a bit teary and watch it. Wow. Teary eyed watching. Receive uh, Hadi Shupan receiving so much love. Yeah, that's what I'm respect. About. Yeah, in his home country of Iran, exactly what you're saying. Adrian. Wow, and Amazing. this is not rehearsed, by the way. Wow. Yeah, I just, see- I just, yeah, I actually, yeah, I saw that a few days ago, but um, yeah, it's just popped up there. I think we should move to Iran, bro. Start up, make, learn I, Farsi, isn't it? Farsi. I'm gonna speak? make a comeback. What do they speak around? Farsi. I, I don't know. Are you sure. gonna do men's physique and get that kind of? I'll do men's. Rain? No, it's Farsi, isn't it? What? No, I think what? it's Farsi. Far what? You speak in Iran. It's the language national called Farsi. Oh. I don't know. Here's the champion. <laughs> I have no idea. You're making yeah. it up. No, no, I think so. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. 
the championship <laughs> award. Yeah, yeah. Can we go to another video? Of, uh, can we go to the latest one of Hadi Shupan, please, Chris? Oh, that, that belt. It's, it doesn't it. mean that much, though, does it? No, I don't, I'm not bothered. This one here. This is the one I went up today. I mean, look, look. Look at this. Look at the respect he's getting. Let me see. I mean, this... Well, this is a commercial for yeah, Evojin, yeah. isn't it? No, it's... Uh... <laughs> no, Hany, Hany Rambod and... Um... Yeah, he owns Evojin. I'm not talking about that. Oh. I'm about Hany Rambod and the uh, the whole AMI crew. The, what, oh, the You know, the, like the letters and the, and the emails and the co and the phone calls and the, the effort. I mean, it really... They really went above and beyond to get this guy, you know. He got really... Um, yeah. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Look at that. That's fantastic. I like Hadi, man. I got a good vibe from him. You good, yeah? Yeah. I got, to be honest, I got a good vibe when I, I met... Well, I kind of met him, but I was around him at the uh, 2017 San Marino. And um, I get a really good... Have you heard his voice? Uh, is it soft-spoken? He's is got... It? When you hear his voice, he speaks in Iranian. Yeah. He, um, he should do those relaxation tapes. Like calm and... I've, he's got like a real, like a melody to his voice. It's really like... It's quite beautiful, actually. And you know, even in at the forums, there are some... Um, what can I say? Oh, it's fantastic. I uh, love seeing that. I love seeing that. Everybody was like, wow, we get such a good vibe from Hobby. Yeah. You know, we don't know him, of course, but all the reaction, all these interviews, even though we couldn't understand what he was saying, of course, because he had a yeah, translator. translator yeah. Every it was a good. It, he just gives out a very good vibe. Did you see the press conference? And he expected him just to have one or two lines, and he went. He, he went. He, he went <laughs> I, I, I won't say on and on and on because the fans loved it. Absolutely mm. loved it. But I don't think we expected him to say so much. But you could, to be honest, he, I think he was one of the only ones at the press conference that actually came with something that he really wanted to say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, he said some really wonderful things that really kind of were inspiring, for, obviously, through his translator. Press conference was oh, absolutely bad, trolling, bro. Bad this year. I mean, they're not always... Oh. Yeah, but AJ, they're not always good. No, mate. but this they're press conference, good. my God. I stayed up to five in the morning in Norway to watch that shit. <laughs> the only thing I liked was Chris Bumstead actually said something. When he said, <laughs> I'm going to take out Brian, he said. Oh, okay. okay. And he did. Luke Surprising. Sander was good. Luke Sander was good. But like a lot of it, yeah, I bring Dennis James back. Bring, oh, you're dissing Sean Ray now? No, no, Sean, it didn't, the chemistry, Sean's very good, but he's better at commentary and he's better at interviews. But uh, uh, like, the, 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 look, look, Dennis James and Bob Chick have got good chemistry. Another thing, look no, at no, the no. likes. 258,000 likes. Well, I'll, I get that when I put a booty pick up. <laughs> I do, I do. It's not, it's not my own booty, though. <laughs> uh, in the interest of clarity, uh, the language spoken in uh, Iran is Persian. Persian, yeah. Also known as Farsi. Oh. Well, I wasn't disputing it. I just thought you were lying. And I know that from watching a lot of King Kamali DVDs when I was young. <laughs> King Kamali. King Kamali. How many times have I... I don't two feel... I'm not feeling the King Kamali thing. There's sorry. two people I want on the show, and that's Lionel Bick yeah, and that's King Kamali. Why? Come well, on. Well, one of them. One of them. Good luck. Oh, bit, oh. I, I've got one person I'd like to come on the show, but he won't come on. I messaged him again the other week. Sean... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sean... R but hasn't he took in your, shook your hand and said, brother, brother? I message him and then he just, he messages back and then he doesn't message back again the second. And then you message him again and he doesn't message back. It's quite annoying, actually. <laughs> no, I, I, to be honest, AJ. Well, he looked no, you in your eyes and said, I'll come on the show, bro. AJ, I'll be honest now, I'll say it now. I'm not going to ask again. Fuck Why it. does he want to come on? Are we such... Fuck it. <laughs> No, I just, no. Oh. It's just like, come on. You know, we got Brandon Curry, oh, all like freaking Brandon. Philly and everybody else on. You know, just, 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 just sort it out. Come on, for 20 minutes. Come on. Well. It's all for your own good. It's not for your own good, but it's for the, for the you know, just fans want to see this. Come on. We've, we've got, a, you're going to talk, Chris? In his defence, isn't, isn't he, like, at the moment, not going to come on until things are cleared up? No. No, because I, I told him we'll avoid all that and we'll just keep it positive. And he's been on uh, one or two other interviews. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. Jay so, Cutler TV. I mean, no, no, I said to him, because like, I've, I've, I've been messaging him and showing him support. and No, I just get rid of him. Bro, if I tell you as a man, yes. Yeah. And then you send me another text and let's AJ, look AJ, at him. Like, AJ, I'm not going to get all precious about my beautiful show. And my lovely student, not my lovely student. Give lovely me student. It's Chris's my, student, my, yeah. my, my, <laughs> my, 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 No, no, I'm what I'm saying. What am I saying? What me, I'm myself, and I. Is that a song or a movie? Or what I'm saying is the show is about me, not you. No. <laughs> now, what I'm saying is it's um, if we go to the all all of us, MD, high tech, all of us as a unit, uh, Pump Media, AJ, all the way from Norway, 
uh, Jocelyn Wales, if we, if the effort we go to to promote these athletes and give them a platform and a positive platform, because we don't clickbait, if they still kind of give us the runaround. Uh, or they just ignore our messages or whatever, then fine. I'd rather give the opportunity to people that do, the up-and-comers, the, the Quintanarias. So speaking of up-and-comers. Who's, the new, who's, the, new, who's the, the new guy we had on recently? The new girl. New girl. Oh, like Sarah Vila. People like that. People that uh, really will appreciate it. Speaking of up-and-comers, give us three names of Giles Quintanaria. expects to bring the M of the F in heat in year 2020. Oh, Alexis Rivera. So you have Alexis Rivera for your part. Quintanaria. Quintanaria. Raphael. Brandel. But I don't call him a new... Ta he's more been he's around a little bit years, now. He's end of 2017, so a year and a half. He's still 26 years old. Who else? Who else? That's the three that instantly popped into my head in the open. In the open. Let's keep busting. Honestly, I think Alexis Rivera, he'll be... Was he injured? What happened? I had a knee problem. He got it... And he got 11th at the Olympia last year. But tell you what, look at that guy's physique. Really study it. There's a guy. And also, who's coming back to the Arnold Classic? Uh, Did the little so call out it's for people at home. AJ's, uh, back in the day, it's two people I've uh, <laughs> I don't yeah, schmoled yeah. on. <laughs> and that's Sergio Oliva Jr. Correct. And Lionel Beke. One came on. Uh, Beke, uh, can I say I've given up? or? Well... Never give up. It's like with Be Cedric. Good. Cedric McMillan is the same thing there. Oh, I've completely given up on him. <laughs> uh, so it's. Uh, I don't do interviews. He kept just waiting around twice at the Arnold. That, and that really <laughs> come annoyed. On, this Cedric AJ, Mars that really annoyed me. Uh, come on. Like, at the end of the day, you know when you got that, like, we say with the Meet the Olympians, right? You got two. And didn't he kiss you that time also? So you thought you had a relationship? Yeah, as I was doing a video, as I was doing the wrap up, it was, I, I, I don't know, I, thought I laughed, but mm. <laughs> I blushed. Um, but you got like, you know, these Meet the Olympians, Meet the Islands, you've got two hours and you've got a video cruise. So you've got two hours to get as many interviews for the fans, for the athletes, to give them all opportunities. We were waiting around twice for Cedric and he knew we were waiting and he kept us waiting. I said, guys, come on, I'd rather go, I'd rather just leave it. And then Steve says, no, I really, listen, Steve said, I really want to get interviews. I said, okay, well, I, said, I think we're wasting our time. So then, um, I wanted to go interview Jessica Reyes Padilla. Mm. So, of course, at the end, we kept waiting right How was Jessica the end. in the flesh, by the way? Jessica Padilla, the yes. I didn't say juicy then, but no. Juicy! No, no, uh, lovely, beautiful, lovely. Yeah, very lovely. Uh, she's, she's smaller. Best walk in the world. When you hug her, she's smaller than you think. Best walk in the world. Uh, oh, come on. Nobody can walk like her. Phil Heath, figure. Phil Heath. Yeah, that's true. With the peck bounce and the... Yeah, that, that's, that's... Coming out the shower. That's... That's... <laughs> <laughs> It's like, do you know what? I, he really laughed when he said that. Phil, I, oh. Phil messaged me when he talked about the video him coming out. Yeah. Yeah, he loved, that, he loved that. So you're three guys that's on Giles. Three guys. You Alexis gotta Rivera, three. and I'm expecting something epic from Sergio in the Arnold. But three guys. Just three guys. Who's Giles Tiger's three guys? Uh, Alexis Rivera, I've really got my eye on. I think he's really fantastic and could be top six Olympia. That's one. Patrick Moore. Quint, I'd like Quinton area. I think he still needs a couple of years. And who was the other one I just said? Oh, Rafael Brando. Because now he's training with Flex Lewis. So I hope we see, like, maybe he'll pull some gangster shit, like you say, AJ. Mm. And uh, maybe he'll really, really step up and. Starting from next episode, he'll, he'll, be, working, he'll be working hard at the Dragons. Though, it's going sure. to be Sergio. We're going to get pump up the Sergio train. Pump up. I'm back going to be back on it. He's, he's looking improved. He's mentally more stable. AJ. There's no girl problems. He's looking big. AJ, at the back at the back where you know we do all the interviews, at the, the side mm -hmm. door where we do all the interviews and the wrap-ups. Right, I saw Sergio because he was doing stuff at <coughs> RX. And um, honestly, Ugh. I couldn't believe how big he was looking. My second one is Sean no, no, no. Smith. I've not finished. AJ. So I pulled him aside and I said, AJ, AJ, no, I didn't say AJ. I said, Sergio. I said, Sergio, can, we have, can, I, have, a, can I have a little chat, mate? Kind of mm, chat. He says, what? Mm. I says, hey, Sergio. Okay, Jay. I said, Sergio, um, you need to sort out this woman drama. Mm. I said, because it's derailed you mm. and it is, it's taken you away from where we feel you should be. And then he said, well, to be honest, Giles, he says, uh, he says, I've done it all in one go. <laughs> I've all had it all in one year. He says, so I've just got it all out the way. He says, I'm ready. I hope so. And he said, he's going to win the best posing award and he can't wait for the Arnold. Sean Smith, I'm looking to make him. Remember that freaky guy? I had him on my old show, Muslims Weekly. Sean Smith, that freaky, like oh, that's something. He got tenth at Tampa, wasn't it? Tenth. It yeah. Tenth oh, I know, Joel Thomas. I love that oh. guy's physique, man. Love it. He's he's awesome. And nobody can touch my heart like Dobry Delev. Yeah, what open or two twelve? That's two twelve. Or oh, that's oh, open. No, no, he's done both. He's done both. He's coming back to the open. 
Okay. Do you think you'll do better as an open? Uh, we let's start the hype train when he comes back, and we'll see. Okay. We got to see. You just, I would like to see him. Oh, Dobri, such a guy, such a free. Just needs Mo to get that crisp oh, condition. Yeah, he needs to get in better condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so. and he and he needs publicity, because sadly, I don't care what people say, they don't judge you. Cor I, they don't give you the look always when you don't know who you are. I think things with publicity are more to creating things like sponsors, which helps your progress and, and your training. No, I don't think it helps you. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Are you telling me all some of these European guys who look great hey, and nobody knows who they are? AJ, we, we AJ, we feature a newcomer. Someone gets, like I've, like I remember I did that article in Muscle Mag with Zach Khan back in 2000 and no, 2000, 2008, 2008. Put him, I, I got him a photo shoot with Kevin Hall and we got him in the magazine uh, muscle, um, flex AMI whatever flex, uh, flex yeah flex magazine says oh we want to give you a, a contract then Nutrex contacts we want to give you a contract because they saw him in that that and then enabled him I mean I know he had his accident and stuff but it enabled him to have sources of income where he could have just trained and become the best bodybuilder that he could possibly mm. be so publicity helps in that way but I don't think it helps in who they're calling out no people at home do you think if you get more publicity you no. get better no, placings the, the judging's better now the judging's very good at the moment. The judging. Who did you have win the classic Olympia? Oh, I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> Come on! I knew you were gonna it say It was that. a George the Bull smackdown. I had George at the judging, Brian at the nut show. So how did Bumstead win then in third? Then uh, I don't know actually. I had oh. him third. I had him third. I had him third. Mm. But I, he's, he is a very good physique. But like the back wasn't. Oh. <sighs> Just not oh, uh, not you don't want to say oh. Uh, front, I mean, he, yeah. Come on, is the back important? It wasn't a disgrace that he won, but, but I was isn't like back the part of your physique. Yeah, yeah. Phil Heath, Dorian yeah. Yates, Ronnie yeah, Coleman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's classic. Yeah. Front so and side, he looked good, but the rear, I was, I thought, no. Nah. I mean, I mean, he went. The thing is, next thing is, he was getting. He was imagine doing a rear double bicep next to George Peterson. Yes. Even Brion's got a fantastic back. So imagine that, and and his back wasn't that great this year. No, not at all. It wasn't. It was like it, that for me would have should have bumped him down to third. Give me two names before we go in classic that gonna that's gonna impress you. That we that's we're not too familiar. Two we could be familiar, but it hasn't really stepped up yet. Two names. Chen, I know one. Chen Kang really uh, really impressed me from China. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and Cambronero looked really good as well. What's his name again? Alex Cambronero. The the first person. Uh, Chen Kang. You know what I hate when people say that Asian when they talk on the commentary. You know, in, at Olympia, when people say, that Asian kid. Oh. I just hate when people say that. You know, you, you don't know if you don't know his name, don't even, you know, people are that right. Asian kid. Okay, okay. Mm -mm. okay. Chen and... Well, I suppose it's a way of identifying him, isn't it? But I don't, I don't see us as racist. Yeah, because Asians are always called that Asian kid. Why can't you know his name? Have well, you seen the, I, those two I, Koreans when they call I, that? I refer to you as that Norwegian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. that Norwegian's <laughs> coming to stay next week. <laughs> so, Chen and... Cheng, um, I like Cam Cambronero as well. Um, oh, Keon. Keon Pearson's really good. But he's moving to 212, isn't he? I got Wesley Wissers. Going to make the epic comeback now. It's about yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Cabanero if he sticks with Flex Lewis Cabanero, and that. yeah. I got so good that he's training with Flex Lewis. That's so cool. Mm. That's really good. And Danny Eubin I like. Yeah, yeah. Very, very good. Bit annoying though. He keeps tagging me into everything on Facebook and it annoys me a bit. He's ne I've never reached out to him and every day into the lead up to the Olympics, he's tagging me in so I keep removing the tag. <laughs> stop it! <laughs> Thing is, after day three, you'd be like, oh, he's removed the tag. Oh, I'll stop tagging him in. <laughs> stop tagging people in, stop trolling. Reach yeah. out to me, say, hey, Giles, can I, you know, don't try and jump. No, uh, it's, it's, it's Facebook etiquette. For the people at home, when we, start, when we started, I don't know about you, when I started, now I'm getting tagged into everything. You get more than me. <laughs> I, I don't mind it, but I, but people, what would be best for the pros listening and the people to come up, yep. send me a DM because I respond to everyone. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, can you help me with a little bit of promotion? I'll say yes. yes. Send, me, send me some personal videos yeah, yeah, that's yeah, directed yeah. towards me where you yeah. just train or you say, hi, I am uh, Sarah and I'm female physique and here are some videos for you. I'll, I'll put them in, in all my stories and on Global Muscle Stories. Because other, otherwise you get people every single day and I see these names popping oh. up, tags you into something. I'm thinking, you haven't introduced yourself. I don't know who you are. I know. And it's thing is, it's like it, in the end, it just irritates me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and I will, and I like it. I like it. And then after day five, I'm like, oh, these guys get on my nerves. Well, you're very easy to irritate. To to at the airport the other day, he saw people, Chris. He was like, oh, AJ, just no, 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 let's AJ. just leave. There's so many people. Just, Chris, oh. Chris, Chris. This is not any airport. Oh, this is Manchester. This, this shit. is Manchester Airport. <laughs>
It's a re- like Obi Wan Kenobi said. It's a shithole. It's a wretched hide of scum and villainy. What's Rubby Robbie Kenobi? What's that? That what? Karate Kid or karate what are we talking about? Star Wars or I what? Don't we- know, I don't know. It's a Batman reference. Okay, well, Batman. I don't. Wa- I don't watch Batman movies. Yeah, oh, I had. I done this. I was gonna shoehorn some uh, superhero uh, references and jokes in to see if you'd spot them. If Zac Efron has I'm going to play in Batman. AJ, I'm going to save it for episode 39, guys. I'm going to put some Marvel and DC super hope. You're looking a bit bored. Oh, you're looking a bit bored. <laughs> I, I'm going to shoehorn some references in, and we've got to see if AJ will spot them. The worst, the most funniest thing this intro was Giles calling out Yobi. What, what's his name? Uh, Danny Uber. Please stop that. <laughs> AJ, AJ, what's the, what's the worst joke I've done? On this show, what's the thing you just thought? Oh, no, cringe. There's, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> so many. I can't just name. No, there's uh, nothing. But poor, AJ, I'm feeling very delicate at the moment. Poor Danny Uben. I'm, I'm trying to stretch out the sympathy vote. Are we going to get Danny Uben on now and tell him to stop tagging me into shit? We'll get him on just to do that. No, 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 no. He, no. no, no I mean, ju- I'll get him on. No, no he, Paris yeah, routine. But, yeah, but he's done now. He's done with his. That's the thing. Is he's done with his shows now. You don't, you don't hear anything anymore. No, he's very good though. Very good physique. No, no, he is. He's fantastic. Fa- like you know, beautiful. Like really symmetrical. Everything's even. Everything's proportioned. Is he American? Where is he from? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Is he Polish or something? I'm so, um, in terms of like like actual classic, he's he's a really good example of classic. What's, beautiful physique. We really bad before we go. We're really bad at geography, aren't we? Well, you Pol- are. is he you Polish? Are. You are. Danny Uben. Is that you? <laughs> I, I knew that it was Farsi speaking in Iran. <laughs> Global Muscle episode. What are we? Uh, God knows. This is 38. 38. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 38. And we out. Yes, I've had a good fun. And, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've had a good run, AJ. We've had a good run. So, anyway, yeah, yeah I just, I'm buzzing. We're back, AJ. Uh, I'm just buzzing. We're back. I want Steve Blackman on soon. Yeah. I want Blackman on because nobody ever got him. Well, he did do a Sean Roden on me and shook my hand and said yes. <laughs> He did. I did at the Olympia. He did the Sean roll? We had bre- we had breakfast, and I said, "Steve, can I ask you something?" And he went, "Oh." He put his glasses down. And he went, "What's that, Charles?" I went, "I've got something. I've got something. I got a request." And he went, and you could see him thinking, "Uh oh." Before we go, and I said, "Steve, could you come on the show?" And he said, "Yes." 2020 Olympia. Just before we go, Ooh. Brandon Curry in the center with, in, with a little bit better legs and more separation and even better condition. Oof, yeah. Phil Heat 2017 look because I don't think he's going to bring you 2011 look and all that things back. Well, 2017 the stomach wasn't great. 2017 look. Everything else, but with a nice. Not 18, 17. No, his stomach was worse than 17. His stomach wasn't bad in 18. It was it was partially fixed in 2018. It was 2017 when it was bad. It beat Rat me. Wasn't that bad? <sighs> Rat me wasn't. I'm Rat me third. Okay, so Bonnet was second that year. Curry. Phil Heat, the GIF 3D swag champ, Phil Heat, the <laughs> legend of legends. Yep. Pictures on the wall. Yeah, he is, yeah. Thanks. Big Ramy, some strange way, uh, more better symmetry. 285. And in condition, none bottom of the, half of the, is three hundred pound calves plus. grown a little bit for some strange Bull, reason. Bullshit, 300 pound plus. Flex okay. Lewis at 228. 226. He had, a, he had his beard shaved off. And the Flexatron 2018 look, yeah. but improved arms. Oh. Who you got? Uh, what about Bonnack? What about Hadi? No, no. Oh, oh sorry. Ha- put in Hadi. Since oh. there's so much hype. Just to round out the top six. What about Patrick Moore? Uh, no, Hadi. These guys. Oh, I can't put him on the spot, mate. Uh, I'd like to think it'd be between Phil, Brandon, and Sean. So we got no Roly up there, no, no Bonner. No, I'm not. Why? I just think these guys here will be make. The, if these guys are microphone, on. Microphone. If these, if Big Ram is finally on. Mm. If Flex Lewis comes in with extra size, he will. He will. And the condition is no for. What do you mean, what do you mean extra size? He, he, he's. He, he loses the extra size to do the two. I know. I know. So that means with extra size and two twelve. You know. Fine then. Big Ramy, Flex Lewis. Yeah. Curry, Roden, he, That's the top of the line. Do you think Flex will beat Ramy? I do. I think Flex Lewis will beat Big Ramy. It's hard to tell. Diddy, diddy. That's, hard. That's a hard question. And I want to see Bonnack versus Hadi again, because that was epic. That was fantastic. But I want to see them at their best. With Flex Lewis, I just think I want to see him. Because I only seen him as 212. It's not, this, it's not open. It's in, like, we, I have to see him at open. I have to yeah. see the size. Oh, you're going to be impressed. 
You're going to be impressed. Because as an open, he's going to look spectacular. I think so. Because the pictures... We've, we've only seen an 80% version of Flex Lewis on stage for the... Well, those pictures... we've only ever seen that on stage because we've never... Because Flex Lewis at his best is 225 to 230. Because those Flex Lewis pictures when he hill before he drops the weight, you know? Oh, Amazing. that's masturbation material right there, bro. <laughs> whoa, the black and white pictures? Yep. Oh, whoa. Right. Okay, Chris is getting up. You know yep. what that means. we got to go. Out, and we're out. Yeah, we're getting kicked out. Work, work, and we out. Yep. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. We'll be right back after the break with our first guest on Global Muscle Radio. And we are out. Out. Do you want it? And welcome back to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Media Studios, joined by my co-host, AJ, all the way from Norway. And we're joined by the Joe Weeder of Australia, Tony <laughs> Doherty. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Tony, thanks for joining us, mate. Can we just turn the volume down a bit? Thanks. It's good to be here, but that's a pretty good intro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tony, you deserve it, mate. You deserve it. No, we think it's awesome. We've been following you for, I've been following you for a long while, and... Um, the love for the sport, the passion, the how you treat the bodybuilders, gyms, uh, your involvement reminds me of Joe Weider a little bit. So that's why we want to give you that nickname here today. <laughs> I like that. What do you think? Well, we'll just have it for today, but thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you've, you, we were saying before we started filming, you've had a bit of a busy day, mate. Uh, uh, tell us about that. I uh, got up at like 4.30, um, left the house at 5 o'clock, went out to the airport, an early flight up to, I went to the gym first just to uh, check a couple of messages and mm-hmm. um, went out to the airport, flew up to Sydney, had about, ooh, we had venue inspections and meetings and that went from I think uh, 10 this morning until 5, flew back again, bit of a delayed flight as you do and then drove back to the gym, back to mm-hmm. home and and it's uh, approaching midnight here now, so it's been wow. a long so, day. So you're saying venue inspections, because um, for, for, for the viewers, uh, Tony is the promoter and organiser of the Arnold Australia, used to be the, um, the Australian pro for many, many years. Um, so that, that venue inspection, what was that to do with the Arnold Australia? Yeah, um, look, I'm always looking around, looking at different cities, looking at different opportunities for both our, our shows, um, uh, you know, the talks that I do, and also with the Arnold Sports Festival, Mm-hmm. And we had an opportunity up there today to look at all the like the Olympic facilities that they had uh, okay. back when they had the Olympic Games here in 2000. And, and I was up in Brisbane, which is uh, the state of Queensland, on the weekend. We had a big show up there and I checked out some venues there. And I've always done this, you know, it doesn't matter what city I'm in, mean, I'll go and look at the convention centres because I'm always thinking ahead and you just don't know yeah. what might happen. Yeah, I mean, we spoke, um, last time we spoke was at the, the uh, Alligator Bar at the venue, at the, uh, sorry, the Olympia on the Saturday night. And we spoke about how you've gone now into things like motivational speaking. And we, we see a lot, I mean, check out uh, Tony's uh, social media, but there's a lot of kind of, because you've got, you've got a very interesting story of someone that has literally come from very little to a lot. To a lot. Yeah, do you, <laughs> yeah. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about that. Tell us about the motivational speaking. And, and also we want to get into your story about, you know, your journey, because it's a, there's something that people can really take a lot from, I think. Um, well, as far as the, the sort of the speaking stuff goes, I've been doing that for a few years, speaking to um, groups and corporations and doing uh, you know, kind of talks like, I guess, motivation is a bit of a dicky word, but for the want of a better one, just um, kind of talking to people about how to empower themselves and how to make their lives better and all that sort of thing. So I had a lot of uh, people wanting, uh, contacting me saying, yeah, can you be a mentor for us or can mm-hmm. we pay you for like some private coaching for life and I'm like no man I'm too busy <laughs> so I thought well if I got all those people together and and put on a seminar yeah I'll break it and I had an idea and I thought I'll keep it I'll call it relentless momentum and we'll put it into three parts so the, the first part you know I'll just tell my story of how I got started and, and how I got to here and then the second part I'll give them like 12 rules of success that I've learned you know coming from the street and not really you know going to university only nothing you can find on Google or in, in a book yeah. So I come up with like 12 sort of key things. And then the last hour was always a question and answer sort of thing. So I put it out there to see if anyone was interested. And we sold out two cities immediately. Mm-hmm. I thought, oh, okay, I should do do more of these. Mm-hmm. So I've just sort of done them here and there. And then, you know, all the Arnold stuff, stuff happened and, and all the traveling stuff happened. And I haven't had enough time to do as many as I want. But I'm going to break back into that over the next few months. I've just started a, uh, a podcast 
which will be along those kind of lines. So it won't be about bodybuilding or how many yeah. chicken breasts or eggs to eat. It'll be more about your mind and mm. and uh, and also you know, the mindset of a champion because I've, I've been lucky enough to work with a lot of high-end um, athletes and coaches and, mm. you know, sort of people over the years. So, um, yeah, we've got a lot going on in that space and always trying to grow it. And uh, it's just always something going on. You say you're doing them like in groups and seminars and stuff, but what's what for the, would you say is the one? If you were to, if you stopped it tomorrow, what would be the one connection you've made with someone where you've really? Because I mean, we spoke about because I'm very into Dr. Jordan Peterson. I like that kind of you know the the, the tw- like the Twelve Rules for Life book he's written and stuff like that. What yep. and, and, you know they always have when you see them interviewed, they always have that one or two examples of someone whose life they've really turned around. I mean, without mentioning names, can you give us say your your favorite example of someone's life that you've really helped to turn around? Not really, because I I don't kind of store that and have a favorite anything. It, okay. It's more like. You know, I get messages um, often and, and you know, it might be someone that I did a seminar with a couple of years ago, a message and say, oh, because of what you said on that day, I yeah. quit my job and I did a course and I got better at this or I became the apprentice of the year or, you know, there's always this kind of thing or it might be deeper, I might get one on uh, Instagram because I do a daily sort of story and, mm-hmm. and chat about that and I had a lady a little while ago who said she um, had someone at work, you know, that was suicidal and always depressed and that sort of thing, so she put her onto my stories and tales and all that sort of thing, she started following and came good. Yeah. You know, so it's great to see something like that. And I remember, well, I've got one example. There's this kid and he reached out and he said, um, you know, I'm going nowhere in my job. I've been a, an apprentice. I think he was a plumber or electrician or something for a couple of years. And I never get, you know, I never get the raise. I never get the promotion, this sort of thing. Um, you know, what can I do? What can I do? And I said, well, what about if you were the first one to get there every single day, you're the first one to get there. You're the last one to leave, and you do all the shit that nobody else wants to do. Mm. I said, have you got it? And uh, yeah, I forgot all about it. And then it was like a year later, he messaged me and said, I just won the Australian Apprentice of the Year. Oh, wow. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He said, because of those those three principles you gave me, he said, I started going to work an hour early. Uh-huh. I'd stay long after everyone left, and the bosses started to notice. And yeah. I did all the shit no one else would do. Yeah. You know, and I said, well, that's what you're going to do the bins and mop the floor sometimes and just keep it real. <laughs> I mean, I read, I read your Facebook post yesterday and I read them out to AJ. Um, you know, you listed them all. I think, that, I think it probably was the 12, the 12 kind of principles of what you... No, no, that wasn't. Was that? No, that's just a rant. No, I don't, let me, just a rant. Yeah, no, that was just a, just a rant. <laughs> <laughs> the, 12 sort of, the 12 principles from the Relentless Momentum seminars, I've not kind of written them down as that because it's kind of fluid. It evolves from seminar to seminar and I'll change one up. And hmm. um, Some of them are kind of deep and some of them are just practical stuff that no one tells you. For example... The first one is always worry about what you can do, not what you can't do. Yeah. And then I talk for five minutes about how we get so hard on the stuff we can't do that we don't do anything, right? Mm-hmm. So I'll give this example when I first opened my, my first gym and I had no money, man. And uh, so instead of thinking, oh, I can't afford that leg press or the fancy cardio equipment that I really need to, to go forward, what can I do? So instead of sitting there feeling sorry for myself, I'd go out and I'd get like 80 bucks together and go and buy a can of paint. And I think, okay, I can paint that wall and look really new and I'll move all the pictures around and then I'd do that one day and then I'd move all the equipment around, which would piss the members off because I'd move the dumbbells over to that mm-hmm. side, the squat racks and drill them all back in again. And people thought I was nuts, but they'd come in and they'd say, shit, this guy's always doing something. Mm. You know, instead of, you know, you walk into a gym and someone's sitting there on their phone or sitting there, you know, back in those days watching videos with their head in their hands, like they don't care about the place. So I thought, I developed this kind of mindset of, just there's always something you can do. And mm. people are just trying to get ahead in life. They worry so much about, oh, I don't have the money, I don't have the education, I didn't get lucky. They don't freaking do anything. Mm. Whereas if they just say, well, what can I do? Well, you can read a book, you can write your story, you can, you can upskill, you can hang around positive people, you can go and work somewhere for free. There's always something you can do. And uh, that's how it is. Do you- so where can people who's not in Australia see, learn? Where can we see this? Is there a YouTube channel you have? Where can we learn this? Your 12 um, rules. So I've just, just started a podcast like a week, two weeks ago, which is called Relentless Momentum, and that's up on Spotify, oh, right. iTunes, all those kind of platforms. Okay. Um, but if you just follow my Instagram, you can, you'll see where, if I'm doing like appearances around the country or world, I always put little ads up there mm-hmm. and uh, everything else. And, and that's so- very needed in today's uh, oh. fitness society because there's so yeah. much depression, uh, recreational drug abuse, whatever. Yeah. People need this. This is very important. Yeah. 
I think um, yeah. I, can, I can resonate with this with, um, like I said, the, the Jordan Peterson thing because it's very, mm. um, it's something I implement into my own life and it's really helped me in every single area of my life is what is known as, like you said, doing small things, incremental progress every day. Small things, just make a few, like you said, uh, painting the wall, doing something, mm. and rather than just sat on your ass talk, talking about what you know you, you can't do, concentrate on the things you can do every single day, and then eventually you find yourself in a position where you are now, where you've literally gone from... I remember you, we were talking at the, um, in Vegas a few weeks ago, and you were saying about how you were sleeping in the gym for... And then you'd, you'd, you'd turn up, and they'd think you had somewhere... You were, you were living somewhere, and then you'd be like... Tell us about that. So... <laughs> So what happened, you know, when I opened the gym, I didn't have anywhere to live and I, I didn't even have a car at this stage because I swapped it um, to a guy for a lap pull down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Ah, that's hardcore. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. need a car. So, I, need, I need lats. So all I had left in the world was, a, 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 you love this, all I had was a rice cooker, a vertical grill and a couch. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we'd open from like, I guess, 6 a.m. until I think it was 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. just before we went 24 hours. So in the mid-90s, so... Um, I'd get up in the morning at five, have a shower, yeah. and I'd walk up to the main road where there was a McDonald's that used to open at five, and I'd mm. get a coffee. There was mm -hmm. a news agent next door. I'd put the, new, the newspaper under my arm and go back to the front door with the coffee. And by now, there's people waiting there to get in, right? So I'd be like, "Good morning, everyone." You know, I just came <laughs> on the track from my house. <laughs> and I'd just you know, carry on with this charade because I'll explain why. But then at night, I'd work the whole shift from six in the morning till nine at night or ten, whatever it was. Then they'd all stand out the front and tell each other stories. So I'd go and hide behind a tree in a nearby car park, wait for everyone to leave and go back. And the reason I did that is because I didn't need to complain and tell everybody, oh, poor me. And I, I figured that if I didn't have to tell people that I still had my dignity, right? Yeah. Mm. It was me that had to deal with it. It wasn't like everybody wants somebody to feel sorry for them. I'm like, no, quite the opposite. I just want people to think, you know, the business is going to work and come in and support it. So um, I did that for the best part of the first year that I was there and, you know, that's this is back when um, uh, Sonny Schmidt, who was my best mate and um, I trained with him for years, he moved, he'd been living in um, San, San Diego with Milos. Yeah. He had trained for years and I'd go and visit them all the time and go to all the Olympias and stuff right back then. So he came back to live in Australia and I said, well, come and hang out at this gym. I just opened this gym. And that was sort of a turning point because then people would come to watch us train. So I trained with him for four Olympias. Mm -hmm. And you know, he never skipped a set. He was an animal in the gym, mm -hmm. no matter what. So we, we'd kind of put on a show every day. We'd train for – he was a big volume trainer, so we'd train for like two hours a day and people would come over to watch and have a casual visit. And of course, I had all the cool Olympia pictures even back then that no one else had. And mm -hmm. So I tried to create this atmosphere and this vibe in the gym and to build something that, that I'd like to train in. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it grew and grew and grew over the years. And, uh, and uh, in 1998 – um, we, we went 24 hours mm -hmm. and uh, it's another good story because I think so many people have a plan B or a, a what if plan, you know. So when I, when I went 24 hours, of course, everyone said it'll fail. There's no anyone who's going to go to a gym 24 hours a day because we said we're going to be staffed all the time, not this kind of passcode or facial finger, fingerprint recognition or any of that. So we said, we're always going to be staffed. And I said, when we do this, there's no turning back. So... When I opened the doors for the first time, this is a new building around the corner from the yeah. old warehouse where we still are today and sort of become the mecca and all that. Um, so when I opened the door for the first time, I got the keys and I threw them as far as I could. And I said, I don't want to even have any keys because there's no plan B, there's no turning back, we're never going to shut the doors again. That was 21 years ago. Mm. So we've been stuck every single minute, you know, Christmas, Easter, Doomsday, whatever, we've always had people there working and uh, yeah. it's become you know, home away from home for so many people. And, and back to what you said earlier, AJ, that, you know, this thing with mental health and exercise, there's a huge tie-in mm -hmm. between people having yeah. somewhere to go, something to do, get all the demons out of their body, you know, get some endorphins going and that sort of thing. Yeah. And it's huge. I, I think unless you've worked in gyms for years, you wouldn't understand that a lot of people don't go to gyms to change their body. They go there to cope mm -hmm. because without that, they've got nothing to look forward to. Yeah. You know, so it becomes a very important part of people's life. So that's sort of how the gym got up and started and mm. what I was willing to give. And, you know, to, to get good at anything, you've got to be willing to sacrifice and do shit for nothing and take some hits. <laughs> Tony, Tony, there has to have been, I mean, I mean, you've gone from there to there. It won't have been a constant, steady progress. There must have been times when there was like a milestone period or a period where you leveled up or had opportunity. 
what how many of those were there and tell us about them well there's there's been a few but you know there's sometimes two where you've got to go two steps backwards to go one step forward and yeah. you fail and you stuff something up and you just get on your feet and then you're back to nothing again i've been through that that many times i would be here all night <laughs> um, you know probably probably the things um all the things that have sort of worked out have been the things that I said I was going to do that everybody said will fail. Yeah. So, for example, doing a 24-hour gym. And then uh, we – well, the gym – the brand sort of started to build, and I was always kind of pretty clever with branding, and, you know, we called it Doherty's Gym because I couldn't afford any other franchises. <laughs> and um, we just thought we'll stick with that. And we, we ended up doing a TV show out of there called Muscle TV, and that was a big break because then I'd get them to always come and film at the gym and – I'd always put people in our T-shirts walking behind them yeah. on the screen. All the time. And I was the host, so I think we did 10 seasons. Mm-hmm. So, wow. you know, it sort of became a bit of a folklore kind of gym and it became, started to become a destination place where they said, you know, if you're going to be in Melbourne, you're going to go to Victoria to that, you've got to go and train at Doherty's Gym. And then, of course, because I was doing the pro shows all those years, every pro's trained there. Mm. You know, and then Ronnie, Ronnie Coleman did a video there in 2005 called On the Road with Ronnie Coleman. 2006, he, I think, 2006. Five. Was it? Oh, oh. <laughs> damn. Sorry. No, because I saw the video that uh, Wayne Galash did. I was actually playing in one of the gyms I was training at, and I was like, oh, that's 2006. Uh, it, it looked incredible, you know. He, oh, wow. He filmed okay. that at one o'clock in the morning. He'd been <laughs> at, at a show all day that I had selling pictures, and you know, when he's selling pictures, he doesn't move. So yeah, yeah. Mm. Ten hours. And we went back, and we got a couple of those salty <laughs> barbecue chickens, polished them off, and he said, let's go and film now. And it was like... <laughs> One in the morning. I've I've trained with Ronnie and it's like I think we were doing shoulders and we by the time we did shoulders we were like it was like midnight and he goes no I've still got triceps and calves to do and I think one thirty by that and then he did traps at one thirty in the morning he goes no I need to train got to train yeah and that's normal for him he just said yeah. how he how he did it yeah. you know and a lot of a lot of great tours with Ronnie but that night was pretty special because you could see while he was eating just all these veins coming out of nowhere <laughs> and we you know, nine plate T bars and all this sort of thing. Oh my God. Because we didn't start filming until like one thirty in the morning, so I think we finished at three or four a.m. Wow. And I've been, you know, emceeing a show and being a promoter all day, and I'm still there with him. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. And, yeah, so Olympia. so you know, there's been a lot of those sort of moments. So back to it. So you know, doing the twenty four hour thing, and then we sort of got the break with the TV show, and then I got a job um, as a weights coach at one of the big. Um, we have AFL or Australian Rules Football. It's a sort of big deal deal here. Mm. Still bigger than soccer here, but you know, of course, soccer is leveling up. But um, in Melbourne, particularly, it's huge. So I got the job as a weights coach mm-hmm. at uh, one of the big, big sort of three clubs, and uh, was there for about five years. So more and more, the reputation grew, and the trainers started being some of all the trainers mm-hmm. and training all the bodybuilders. And of course, that time we're still doing pro shows and everything else. And then I thought, oh, when Arnold, so I'd been, I started promoting bodybuilding back in. Shit, like late eighties, I think eighty eight or something was oh. my first show. Wow! Because um, you said so, yeah, it's the because been... lo- you said to me at the in Vegas, you said I've got the is it the second or the third longest running pro show? Oh, that's a pro show, but I did amateurs for like a long time before that right, I started. Okay, okay. As I said, back in like eighty eight, but yeah, the Australian Pro started in two thousand and one, mm-hmm. and that's the third longest running pro show third. in the world yeah. after the Olympia and the Arnold. So, right. oh, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. So, we just stuck it out, you know, and that's yeah. what I was going to say. So when I got to do that, everybody said that would fail. They'll, they'll never come back. They'll never do it. And this is what <laughs> you and I were talking about, Giles. That yeah. I thought, well, I'll do it once to see what happens, you know. And then um, we got a really good group the first year. Chris Cormier won it. We've been best mates until this day. Mm. And and uh, I just didn't have the budget like everyone else had, right? But I'd been travelling with a lot of Aussie bodybuilders and seen how badly some of them got treated. I remember we went to the like the Iron Man one year, and, you know, they wouldn't let us on, on the, the official bus to go to the show because... What? Yeah. Because this name hadn't come through there, and then there was no food backstage. I just yeah. thought, it's got to be better than this, you know? And then, uh, you know, I'd travel with Sonny, and we'd go to some show in Canada or Buffalo or whatever. <clears throat> get in the middle of the night, there'd be no one there to pick you up, and you'd get oh. room service menus. All your food would get confiscated at the border, right? And uh, <laughs> you'd get those... Uh, uh, room service menus that have like soggy pasta and and uh, club sandwiches and fries. Yeah. yeah. And here's someone who's dieted for 20 weeks. Yeah. And what do you do? Yeah. So I thought that could be, become my strength. So knowing all that, when we did the first Australian Pro, I had you know all the guys go out and pick them up from the airport to bring them straight mm-hmm. to the gym. 
and we had this huge spread. We had like a barbecue out the front. We had chicken breast, <laughs> mm. grilled fish, wow. steaks, wheat potatoes, mm. rice. Like it was a, I was a full meathead bodybuilder. So I don't know exactly what they want to eat. So we had it all set up. Yeah. And then we had takeaway containers. Then instead of putting them in hotels, I put them in apartments with cooking facilities, washing machines. And then in the rooms, I'd have you know, all the things I'd need to cook and just really yeah. thought it out. And you know, then we'd, we'd always drive them to the show and then when they'd get to the show, we'd come out after the pre-judging. I remember Chris and Dexter still remind me, I'd jump up on the tables and say, ladies and gentlemen, come and get a, you know, the photo, because you thought so, sell the mm-hmm. photos, come and get a photo with Chris Palmer, he's right here. And then I'd jump to the next table and say, Dennis Jones is here. And the next one, Dexter Jackson's here. And the guys loved it. Yeah. Because they'd sell more dice. Because the Aussie fans were and still are crazy, you know, <laughs> and they sell more merchandise here than anywhere oh, really? else in the world. Really? Wow. Do you, Tony, yeah, Tony, do you, do you know? Do you know how I know? How I knew how well your shows were run and how well you treated the athletes because. When you'd see, like, I used to go to the post I used to, in the nineties. I used to go to all the British Grand Prix, and you go you you'd on the on the European Grand Prix tour, and the guys would always struggle. They'd never get better; they'd get kind of steadily, incrementally worse. But I always just think, hang on a minute, the guys are going from the Arnold because your show was always after the Arnold Classic, and the guys would travel all the way to Australia, and they would end up being better than they were at the Arnold. Sorry, the Arnold Pro, the pro, you know, Arnold, uh, sorry, the Australian Pro than they were for the Arnold Classic. And I'm thinking. He must be really looking after these guys. Because remember around Kai Green 2009? Yeah. I think he looked, well, he did. He looked better at your show in Australia after all that travel um, and being in a different country than he was at the Arnold Classic. So that always indicated to me how well and how well you looked after those athletes. Yeah, well, it was probably part of it too. But I think, you know, um, with those big ticket shows like an Olympia or, or an Arnold Columbus, yeah. The guys put so much pressure on themselves and they've got their coaches around them always telling them, take this and do this and eat that and drink this and don't drink and all this crazy stuff. And they try so hard to pop that extra 5%. Yeah. That a lot of times they And then they learn what they did wrong. And nine times out of 10, they leave their coach at home. Mm. And then they come out here. Oh, okay. We pick them up. At the end, we take them straight to the gym. We say, do some cardio, have a workout. Here's all this clean food. We don't have any shit food lying around for them to sell us. Yeah, you know, cram burgers and pizzas. I mean, they can go look for that, but I think because everything was always there for yeah. them, mm. they just stuck it out and they had each other. And then you know, the uh, the older guys that have been on the tour would sort of mentor the younger guys. If you're going to travel, this is how you can sustain and get better every week. Mm. So I think it was part. It was partly that, and partly the fact that the pressure's off of those big shows. And I think more and more because the coaches, a lot of them, you know, just try too hard and don't understand the needs of that athlete. You think it's to do with the coaches, though? You, th- you, think, you think it's because they had a less kind of intense approach and they just relaxed a little bit more and they end up co- that bring out, that brought out the best more in Absolutely. Them. You, you think Absolutely. that's what it is? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Today. Well, you probably the fact that the, pre- the pressure's off. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The pressure is for a big show. Imagine your favourite to win the Arnold or the Olympia. Yeah. You know, that's why this year, last year, every year at the Olympia, there's never been a year where everybody's on, right? Yeah. Because someone fell over or someone will miss their mark or someone, shit, this guy could have won it. He looked better a week ago than he does today. Well, it happens every year. You think they push and it I too hard. They, they push it too hard for the big shows. I remember, because like Flex Wheeler always used to look absolutely amazing at the Arnold. In the Olympia, he'd always be like 90% at best. Maybe it was that. Look, uh, look, everyone's different. But I think, you know, mentally, um, when you're under so much pressure and so much anxiety and self-doubt, yeah. it holds water and you don't eat yeah. your carbs properly. And I think when you're relaxed in life, you're better at anything, right? Yeah. So we just look back to we just try to give them a great experience. And then mm. that went for a few years and I turned it into... Um, so in 2011, when Arnold stopped being governor, finished being governor, he um, mm-hmm. said he was going to take the Arnold Classics worldwide. Mm. And I'm just about to start a, a, a startup expo called FitEx, which I did with the Australian Pro. Yeah. So I kind of, I've been going to the Arnold for years and always dreamt of bringing it to Australia. So I started to sort of go along the lines of their model, getting more sports and martial arts involved and, you know, arm wrestling and a few of these things. And uh, I was just watching that space and watching his fitness crusade kind of develop. And obviously he went to Spain first, mm-hmm. you know, when he first expanded. And then when he said the next, next continent will be South America. Mm-hmm. And... <clears throat> sorry, what, was, sorry, was it? Sorry, was there? Was there nothing like that in Australia? Nothing like it, or even remotely similar in that that kind of Arnold type event? Was there nothing to compete with? Well, no, there was other fitness expos, but I took them on. I just thought, you know, I oh, know okay. my product better, and I've got 
you know, access to all the pros and I had access yeah. to the wrestlers and access to the best powerlifters and strong. So I just kind of modelled it like that and, you know, just, you know, from a business point of view, just went really hard at it. And there was mm. nothing in my city. The big one, I guess, that was in opposition was in Sydney at the time. And as it sort of evolved, I thought, I'm just going to try and build this and make it so good and, you know, make it so uh, professional, everything else in this great city, that when Arnold and, and the Lorimers look at Australia... I might be their only choice. Yeah, that was yeah. my intent. Right? <laughs> and then when he was in, so after Spain, he said, I'm going to do South America. He went and did Brazil. And then when he was in Brazil, he made a speech and he said, you know, the next continent we're going to take over is Australia. Like, ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're waiting for the phone so call, like, waiting for the phone call. Exactly. I was telling this story today in a, a, a meeting in Sydney. So I literally sat there waiting for the phone to ring and the phone rang. Wow. <laughs> or I got an email or, or whatever. Anyway. Was it, uh, sorry, was it, then, Jim, uh, was it Jim or Arnold that called you? Uh, it was Bob Lorimer. Bob Lorimer. Mm. Bob Lorimer. Cool. Yeah, it came through the through the I for B contacts, and then when I went over there to have this meeting, yeah. the person I met and clicked with was Bob Lorimer, and he oh, made me an offer. Uh-huh. And I said, "Well, come, you better come out and check out Melbourne." So he came basically straight back with me, checked out all the uh, facilities here. Um, could see that it was probably the best city in the world for because with all the sporting facilities right yeah, in the yeah. city, right on the river, and so on and so on. And because of my experience now with expos and, of course, of running the pro shows and having the relationship I had with bodybuilding, mm. it was, you know, for them, it was a, a good fit. So then, I, you know, once they gave me the green light, they said, well, you better come out and meet Arnold and tell him why you should be the partner. And obviously, they did their homework on me and everything else. And um, five years ago, we did the first Arnold Classic, and I've been traveling, you know, yeah. with the Arnold um, Sports Festival worldwide ever since. I, you know. Hardly missed one. You and Arnold seem to have a really good bond as well, because you spent a lot. Because I mean, he, he wouldn't have picked you if he, you know, didn't. Have, it wouldn't have just been uh, Bob or Jim Lorimer's decision. I mean, you two seem to have a good relationship, don't you? Yeah, we really clicked. You know, I think from the first time I went over there, he made me feel really welcome and kind of gave me some some great advice. Because you know, when when we first met, I was at the Arnold in Columbus. It was 2010, saying okay, the first time was going to be 2000. And let me, uh, sorry, where are we? 2015. Yeah, I was thinking of FedEx. Um, so, yeah, you know, I said, well, I've got a year to, to prove myself and to get into it and go home. So I went back, but then I started going around the world to all the other Arnolds to get experience and to see how it worked and all that. So the first one I went to after that was in Brazil. Okay. And uh, you know, I ended up being in the middle of the bubble, helping them with some sort of close protection work and sort of bodyguard. You know, which year was this? 2000. I guess, well, my first one was 15, so this must have been 14. Yeah. Oh, the, the infamous year. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't trigger AJ. <laughs> oh, yeah. We can go there anyway, so, so I, we kind of bonded, you know, in the madness of getting him through the expo and visiting all the sports. You could yeah. sort of see a different skill I had. And then we went to, um, what was next, I guess, Barcelona, or it was mm-hmm. Madrid back then. And then, you know, a year later, it was Columbus, and it was mine. Um, the first year was a week later, but now it's always two weeks later. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we just got to travel a lot, and I've been to all the Arnolds with him, and I've got to interview him, I guess, half a dozen or more times now. And mm. I've been called up to do the press conferences. And then this year, finally, after waiting for like 28 <laughs> years, I got asked to MC the uh, Arnold in yeah. Columbus. And then yeah. I took over, took over from Lonnie, didn't you? Took over from Lonnie Tapper. This year, yeah. yeah and then yeah. I did the one in Brazil as well. So I did three in a row. Oh, wow. You know, in, in, in like five weeks, I think, five or six weeks, I did three in a row. Wow. So that was kind of a big buzz, you know. It was a, yeah, yeah. Um, particularly the one in Columbus, you know, because I've been going there since I was <laughs> you know, a young guy and, and, and dreaming of being up in that spot one day. So it was super cool. I, I could I, see you were so excited when you were on there. I could, see, I could see you were a little bit nervous, but it was like nervous excitement. So. Did you have, who did yeah. you have winning there? Did you have Curry or Brandon? At Arnold, Ohio, because you were there up close. Curry or Brandon? That's the same I mean, dude. Curry or Bonac, I'm sorry. Curry or Brandon. <laughs> uh, Bonac or William. Um, uh, I, look, I think, you know, they're different kinds of bodies. And I think looking back then, and of course, I'm standing at the podium, so I'm not getting a front on view, but yeah. I, did, I did watch the prejudging. And I think that Brandon had that invisible skin. And he was so, so grainy mm-hmm. um, that that I thought, you know, that probably got him across the line. And then this year at the Olympia, yeah, at the pre-judging, I actually had Bonac first after the pre-judging oh. because I thought Brandon lost that graininess mm. and Bonac had everything at the Olympia. And I sat in the front row with, it was me, Chris Cormier, Flex Wheeler, Dennis James and Barry DeMay. Some good you know, eyes and halfway there. Through the, now you're just showing you know, off. There's, there's a lot of experience there. Yeah, there's a lot of experience and, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Sorry, and Topomania was there with us too, Stan McCreary. And yeah. all of us, you know, at halfway through the pre-judging, are saying it's Bono. Wow. Because he's got more 3D look. He's, you know, he's really sucked in, you know, in the right spots, as in he was sort of, wasn't grainy, but he had, you know, when he's, when he's sort of gets sort of shrink wrapped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Between, his, yeah. between the, like the quad and the hand that the skin's like stretched. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, that real, yeah, that's a shrink wrap sort of look. And, you know, from behind, he was great. He's got that hanging muscle on his back. Yeah. And I thought that Brandon had tried to put on this size yeah. for the Olympia and kind of lost his graininess. Okay. And the other thing that impressed us all was that at the end of that first round that Steve put them through, you know, they were all gasping for air and holding their knees. And, <laughs> and Bonnack was standing there like a warrior, just going, come on, bring it on. <laughs> and, and, you know, he was. And, and to me, that was great professionalism because yeah. he was like a warrior. He wanted it. He'd obviously practiced holding his poses over and over. He could, he could have done that for another hour. I was really impressed with that. Then at the finals, I don't think he changed. I think he was exactly the same. But Brandon, I think, dropped. We he told did. him he dropped quite a few pounds yeah, overnight. He and he had that same grain, grainy look with a little bit more muscle mm. than I think he had in Ohio. So I was happy you know, with that top three. Mm. I, I, was, I was happy the way it could have gone anyway, yeah. but I think they got it right. What did you think? I really think they got it right. What did you think about Hadi? Were you impressed with him? Is that the first time you've seen Hadi? Well, yeah, absolutely. First time I've seen him live, man. And, yeah. you know, and I interviewed him, for, um, NPC, interviewed him for NPC News after the show, and his interpreter told me he was 98 kilograms. So that's just out of the How two much twelve. Is that I, well, I heard. I think so, Hani told us okay. he was two twenty two. Two twenty two. Two twelve is ninety six point six. So he's, oh. about, so he's about 217, 218. So he's only 217 on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 1.5 one kilogram yeah. or three pounds over the, so he's like the two, 212, right? So he's like 216. Because I, mean, I know at San Marino, when he did San Marino in 2017, when he okay. beat Brandon. But even, if it does, even if he's 220, he's yeah. standing up there with these monsters holding his own. I'm yeah, like, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. very, very impressed with his condition. Good physique, it's a good physique, I though. Think he's got, I think standing next to those guys, yeah, even next to Dexter and Rowley, his faults showed up, you know, that upper chest is kind of lacking and that some details on the back and mm. obviously his quads are great and all that sort of thing. Some of his poses, he hits them and think, wow. But then in between, you can kind of see, I think he's a couple of years away from did, having that, that 3D sort of depth that the yeah. other guys have got. Did, did, I mean, thing is, he, I mean, he was prepping, but he didn't, I think if you don't really know, you're going to 100% be able to step on stage. Maybe he was prepping for a show like Italy or Romania or something. Do you think? Do you think that no plays? Way, do you think he no play, that plays a part? No. Do you think that plays a part? No, I completely disagree. I think okay. he's a fucking animal. <laughs> I think he's an animal. You can't look like that without putting your whole life, life heart, and but, soul into yeah, but it. He didn't know, he did, yeah, but he didn't know he was doing he was the Olympia for certain. That, but he competed at Vancouver. He was almost Vancouver. Yeah, whether he got the visa or not. Oh, okay. In my opinion. I think the way he looked and what I know about the guy, he just said, I'm going and he trained for it regardless. That's... And he thought, well, I'll just deal with it. If I don't get to go, I'll deal with it. And then... Because I think, and this is, see, I talked earlier about this motivation stuff I do, and I study the mindset of athletes. Yeah. And a true athlete and a crazy guy like him that's waited his whole life to be at the Olympia, he's not going to leave one stone unturned just in case he gets there. Just in case. So I, don't think, I don't think he kind of rushed into it because his condition was phenomenal. And that mm. conditioning... T- Aim. Yeah, but t- Tony, know. Tony, did you see how he looked at Vancouver? Well, I wasn't there. I see pictures. But here's the problem. Everyone sees pictures on, on the internet and you see oh, videos. On the in- it doesn't, you can never tell unless you're there. You know, so I, I, I hate judging people on their pictures and how they look because every set of lights is different. Yeah. You know, and you, I, think you know, I can say, I'm qualified to say what I said because it was in the front row right, okay. with those, those OGs of the sport. <laughs> okay. And if I see a picture from... From Vancouver, well, I thought he looked fantastic, but yeah. I wasn't there. Man. Well, I, I, I was. So, doing, I did the wrap up. Can't with, say if he's improved or not. Yeah, I did the wrap up with Flex Wheeler and Hanny Rambod, and Hanny definitely said, and Flex alluded to it, and then Hanny went, "Yes, I agree. I think he was nine, eighty-five to ninety percent what he was at Vancouver." And Flex Wheeler said, "I think if he'd have been like he was at Vancouver, he'd have won." So that yeah. shows that he could still, he, he's that impressive. Now, if he's on next year, it really, I think it makes excite, it really exciting for next but year. But if he just said he doesn't have the 3D things that Curry and Bon and uh, Bonac no, had, no. it wouldn't matter if he was a little bit more conditioned. So he I, wouldn't have I it. think if he'd have been like he had in Vancouver, I think he would have won it. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's easy he, to Hanny say said that. that Hanny said that. Those, but in, in Vancouver, he didn't have those other guys standing next to him. Yeah. And there was, uh, he oh, was, oh, he, the thing is, it's he, all, that it's all was subjective. Like, he look, beat Nathan Diasho, just like, lost the role, yeah? Yeah, exactly. And then look at look at um, Dexter in Tampa. Yeah. You know, when, 
when he beat your your English guy. <laughs> Luke, <laughs> your English. Yeah, yeah, so, oh, yeah. He looked up, he looked unbelievable. Yeah. But Brandon wasn't there. Rolly wasn't there. Mm. Bonnick wasn't mm. there. Different Hardy lighting, wasn't I suppose. There, yeah, Rami yeah. wasn't there. Except that. And so on. So I try and have this kind of perspective on it all and just say, look, you can only judge a show when you're there. And I think they got the top three right. Yeah. You know, I was, I, I thought that, um, you know, I hoped that Rowley would have been at his all-time best because I think he could have shaken the whole thing up. And, yeah. You know, obviously, there'd be no one more disappointed than him. Yeah. And I thought Dexter was really flat at the pre-judging and certainly improved mm-hmm. enormously to get to the finals. But, you know, the Olympia every year, everyone improves from Friday to Saturday, right? It's pretty mm-hmm. hard to go that well, Phil Heath always does, and yeah, Mr. Yeah, Saturday yeah, Night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Tony, um, oh, we just frozen up a bit there. Oh, Tony, yeah. Tony, can you settle? Can you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, we're fine. Can you settle something for us? Last episode, we had <laughs> last episode we had Sean Ray on. Yep, yep, and he said that um, in a rear lat spread, Flex Lewis takes out William Bonnack. Think about it. Um. Don't know. Once again, I've got to see you in front of me. <laughs> um, yeah. Look, I, I, you know, I interviewed Flex a lot of times over the years, and each year that he looked like he was going to step away from two twelve, which was a few times over the years until he made that decision. Yeah. Um, I'd always say that to him. I say, man, you don't like the way he dieted for the shows, and and uh, um, Neil Neil, his coach, would always say to him, you know, he was two twenty, you know, week out, and we had to almost mm. kill him to get him down to that weight, and you think. Doing that, how much muscle he'd sacrifice. Imagine if six yeah. weeks out he didn't have to do any of that. Yeah. He could just come in as big as he could. He might be 225. He's, yeah. 226. Well, I, I, like I, I, stage. I, yeah. And him at that, I think your answer is what we just saw with Hardy. A guy like that with that much muscle can stand up next to anyone. And I think, you know, Flex could go into an Olympia and be a top five threat, mm. um, period. So then you've got to put him next to Bonac and next to Rowley and next yeah. to Dexter. And, and this is where it really. Those guys are really good, Giles. You know this. Yeah, And yeah, you can yeah. see them and with other guys, but it's only until you put them... Okay, now let's see how this works out. But, you know, I'd love to see uh, Flex Lewis compete without this weight thing in his head. He's, I, he's I, an animal. I, I've spoke... To, I asked Flex at the seminar last year. I said, Flex, what's your best... What body weight is your best physique at? And he said 226. So I think next year we're gonna, we are going to see him. Yeah, 225, 226. How do you think... So you th- honestly think he could be top five next year? Yeah. Well, we don't know who's going to compete yet. But I know, I know. Looking at this yeah. year and so looking at this year and last year, he'd be right up there with them. Yeah, yeah. I think they all know it too. Don't worry about that. Any any final questions for Tony? Uh, is there? You've been you've been listening. Yeah, I've been intently. listening. I've been listening. <laughs> He's really been. Uh, just the uh, last. Uh, just is there any chance of you uh, since you're from Australia calling Von Moger up and tell him to start competing? <laughs> Call who? Von Moger up and who? start. Who? Uh, who? Von Moger. Yeah, is Von there- Moger. The problem is he doesn't live here. He lives in L.A. Uh, <laughs> we want to see an Australian. Come on, man. So, so you're not friends with him, huh? Or is, are, you see, is he, are you friends with him? Or Oh, we're cool. Yeah, look, I always see him at the expos and stuff around the world. And he's mm. trained at my gym over the years. He's always been cool. Um, but he hasn't lived here for a long time. You know, once he got sponsored by, it was it like Celia Cora or something? He was over That's in the right. States yeah, kind yeah. of full time yeah, uh, yeah. for a long time. And, uh, yeah, he's a good guy. He's a lot of fun, and which is why he keeps hurting himself. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Australian blood. No bad We're cool. We're cool. No. So, do you want to do want to tell us any anything about the Arnold Australia? Anything you got planned? Anything new? Any uh, any new plans for it? Well, we're going to bring in men's uh, men's physique for the first time into the pro pro okay. category. I've had like the same four categories for years, so I think it's just time to step that up. And I think they're going to bring a whole lot of new fans in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've had quite a few Australians have turned pro in physique mm. and haven't had the opportunity to travel and everything else. And I announced it backstage when I was doing my interviews and all the top guys said, we're in, we're in, we're in. And everyone yeah. wants to go to Australia, right? And yeah, then they've yeah, heard yeah. through you guys and all the other pros how well they get treated. Yeah. So I think um, that's going to be a great addition. You know, We're doing some absolute crazy stuff with this strongman. We're building some stuff that's never been seen in the world before. Mm. Um, and just trying to raise the bar. You know, Jim Lorimer told me when I first started working with him um, to manage my expectations, but his expectation was always to be better than your previous best. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we have to sit down after every expo and we think, how can the bills look better? How can the security work better? How can the hotel function better? And, and we do debrief every single angle and everything. Mm. So, um, you know, we look at the staging, we look at the lighting, we look at the sound, we look at every single aspect and always try to improve. Mm. 
So um, it'll never end, man. It's like my gyms. I'm still buying equipment for a gym. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but it'll never end. Uh, will well, uh, wellness, is, is, will that be there this year? Wellness division, because that's making its debut in 2020. Um, will that be there? You know, uh, we've introduced it into the amateurs, but I yeah. won't have it as, as, a, as a pro Arnold event this year. Okay, but yeah. amateur. Guy, it will be. Guys, it's, guys, I think we really need to get ourselves to Australia next year. I think we need to get there and cover this show. I'll, I'll do it for expenses, just expenses. Make sure that Jeff Beckham well, shows up in shape this time. Down yeah, there. Jeff Beckham, get your ass in condition. You're <laughs> Australia, mate. So look, just a big shout out to all the Aussie bodybuilders. We're right in the middle of our, our national season right now. We had okay. our first show in Queensland at the weekend where we had as many athletes there at the state show as we had last year at the yeah. nationals. Oh, wow. It was with the Pro League. And it, it was... We, well, with before crossovers, it was like 150, and with crossovers, it was like 240 or 250 or something. Then this weekend, so it's we're into the Wednesday night here. This weekend, I've got three cities. We've got one in Melbourne, which is going to break all records. One in Sydney, wow. which is already better than last year. One in Adelaide, which is another city. Then we're back here, and then the following week, with um, Josh, Josh Leonardo, which and I promote a show in Western Australia. The city is called Perth, right. yeah. and we're flying Rolly. Oh Rolly wow! wow. Okay, okay. Josh, so yeah, so uh, Rolly's going to be here, and uh, he's great. a lot of fun. <laughs> he and, yeah, every, everyone loves Rolly. Yeah, 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 You know, and he won our Arnold Classic here in 2017. So, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. that's one of his um, best looks ever. That's one of his best looks. Oh, that was amazing. Absolutely. Then, yeah, yeah. then uh, October 20th, we've got our nationals here mm -hmm. um, with you know all the pro cards getting given out for each category and Rolly guest posing again. So big shout out to you know everyone training for those. We really yeah, do yeah. appreciate it. And you know, Rolly and um, I'll tell you a good story before I go. Rolly and Bonac mm -hmm. both kind of did their pro pro debuts out here. Or you know, I know Neil Hill reached out to me about Bonac, Bonac and said, "Look, I've got this guy. I think he's going to be really good. Can you yeah. give him a break and get him out of your?" I guess it was FedEx at the time. Is that 2012. And uh, well, there you go. See, so, yeah, it's before. That's three years before the Arnold. So that's when I just started the FedEx. And then um, previous to that, you know, Rolly had reached out and said that he wanted to do his pro debut here. So well, let's let's bring him out and give him a bit of a start. And he qualified for the Olympia here uh -huh. for the first time. So those guys have always had this incredible love for Australia and the fans. Yeah. And you know, they've, they've, they've both supported my shows enormously. Um, you know, we've only got to just mention coming out of the guest pros and they're on the next plane sort of thing. So <laughs> they're, they're two of the really good, really good guys of this sport, you know. Yeah. Tony, um, and, uh, it's, yeah. Finally, my old mate Chris Cormier is coming out for the Nationals as well. He's been supporting. Okay. Oh, nice one. Since 2001. And uh, he, I think he's, he's the best guy in the sport and one yeah. of the best coaches, certainly with posing and getting your mind into your muscle. If you get a chance to ever work with Chris, just jump on because he's, mm. he's something else. Yeah. Tony, that's uh, it. I want to thank you because I know it's very late over in Australia now. Very late. You stayed up for <laughs> us. Before, I know you're falling asleep before we came on, but I, I'm glad you woke up for us. So, yeah, no, good. So uh, if I'm a bit slow, that's what it is. But listen, thanks, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. And I hope to come on again one day soon, all right? Thank you, Tony. Thank you. And, uh, and I'm going to speak to Steve about sending us to your show next year. So. All right, let's get on to that. Come on, Steve, lift. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tony, take care, mate. All right, guys. Bye -bye. All the best. Thank Bye -bye. you. All right, I'm out. Bye -bye. <laughs> Oh, good one, huh? Ooh. Yeah, fantastic, mm. fantastic. What a, a what a, I mean, it, it's, there's so much history with someone like Tony. You know, it takes so long to go kind of go through. I mean, that guy, he's he was literally like living in his gym, living in his car, and then he started living in his gym, and then he now has six fitness centers, big fitness centers, mm. kind of like what Bader's done in Bader Badai. Beta Budai has done in Q8, you know, starting small and they've just exponentially grown every year. The Australian Pro re running since was 80, 90, 90, 91. Bada Budai started with a lot of cash though, yeah. I think. Well, so, Tony, so. Is, Tony is, uh, he's, he's a self-made man mm -hmm. and I'm glad he's doing things like podcasts because he talked about the, um, when we were at the bar, uh, the glass of wine and we were talking about um, like all his motivational, like yeah, he said it's a mm. funny word, but the, the, the kind of reaching out to people, helping inspire people, turn their life around, help them make incre incremental progress that will see their lives, turn it around. And he's, he said to me, he said, I don't do it for the money. He says, I do it for the love of it. He says, I do get paid for it. He says, yeah, but he says, uh, he says I get a lot of satisfaction. It gives me purpose. We got to go. We have guests ready to go. We got to go. Okay, then hope you, hope you enjoyed that interview with Tony Doherty. And we'll be right back after the break with our next guest on Global Ready. And we are out. Episode three.
And welcome back to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pop Mina Studios, joined by my co-host AJ, all the way from Norway, and we're joined by three-time, three th- Arnold Classic 2019 winner, correct, correct, Mr. Olympia figure 2019 winner, Miss Olympia Miss, even, Miss Miss, I'm sorry, <laughs> Sydney <laughs> Gillen, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Sydney, uh, I feel like we haven't spoke for a couple of weeks. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm. Um, uh, I interviewed you at the Olympia in the arena, correct? Yes. 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 So, sorry, sorry, you said did you have the Olympia in the arena? So you know, I, inter- I interviewed at the um, was it the arena, wasn't it? On the Meet the Olympians. Yes, on the at Thursday the Meet night. the Olympians. Yeah, that was our last time. Yeah, yeah. So how does it feel now? You've won the Olympia three times. Three times. It feels amazing. I I dreamt about this day. I work every day for that one moment. And so to have it actually come to fruition, there's really nothing that describes it. It's like, this is actually real. Like, sometimes you got to take a step back, sit down, and be like, you actually did it. But then you can't really dwell on it too long. You got to go ahead and move on to the next thing. Uh, AJ, she's still so young, and she's achieved so much. And she also won the show the week before, the Phoenix. Right, uh, Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. That was a little bit risky, wasn't it, to compete a, a week before or no? I don't think so because my coach always likes to have me like ready early. And so I think for me, Phoenix is the perfect opportunity. One, it's an amazing show because it's all women and there's no shows like that. So that's just cool in itself. But even that, we get to get all the kinks out because people don't realize if you take a six-month gap in between shows because the Arnold Olympia is six months apart, you're rusty. I don't care who you are. You're going to be a little rusty. Okay. So you get on stage, you get all the kinks out, and if you change your routine, your body should have changed. So you mm-hmm. need to learn how that looks on stage. Mm. It, it was a great battle uh, with you and Latoria. Mm, uh, it's good. Did you ever think she ha- were you confident the whole time that you're gonna win? I'm always confident in what I bring. That's all I can control. I'm not the judge, so whatever they like or whatever they think looks the best that day, that's on them. So all I can do is focus on me, bring my A game, and that's it. Mm. So what? Now you've won the Olympia three times. Mm-hmm. You've won the Arnold Classic. Are you gonna go back to Columbus to defend your title in March? You never know. You oh, never know. come on. You must I'm know. I'm all about silence. I just like to t- I'm a show oh, really? pop-up person. I just oh, pop up no. where you... I feel I need to pop up. <laughs> Is there, have, you, have you heard of anybody else that's uh, planning to do the Arnold, or have you given it much thought? I haven't heard of anybody else. I I'm, I'm tend, to, tend to be the same people who compete at the Olympia, so I'm oh. assuming most people will be who compete at the Olympia will be probably putting their, their um, applications in for the Arnold. Oh. Do you like how the class is growing? Because I think the figure class, it's, there's more attention now, the, mm. I think. There's more s- profiles coming out of that class now. Do you like the evolution of the class? Do you like the progress? I absolutely do. Because back in the day, it was very, very, like, just small. Yeah. And for a lot of girls like me, we're not naturally small people. We put on muscle, we carry muscle, and that's just how our bodies are built. Okay. So once that transition happened, we went from being more, like, Super, super streamlined, thinner kind of looking um, into like more muscular athletic type of looks. Nice. I feel like that benefited the class yeah. overall because there are a lot of athletic women out there. We just didn't have a space. Mm. So for me, when I was first coming out, I had to run repeat 800s all day, do hours of cardio mm. just to get down to stage just because I, I carry muscle. Mm. And so once the class changed, it allowed a lot more women like me to come in and have healthier preps. Really yeah. just enjoy training, get on stage, and showcase what muscular shapes can look like versus being super, super straighter. I, I felt like this year, I felt like some of the conditioning wasn't as extreme because I noticed um, like um, Jessica didn't come in and say hard as she did at the Arnold Australia. And I like that because I didn't like it where a couple of years ago, certainly in, uh, I felt like it was hit, looking more towards like physique type mm-hmm. level conditioning and I thought that wasn't a direction it needed to go in because I don't think it's a you need to be able to, to differentiate between physique and figure so I was really sure. happy that you know the, the look that you Latoya um who was third place not just just was fourth oh no, uh, no, Nadia, no, no, Nadia, Nadia Wyatt, yeah, Wyatt yeah, yeah no I mean I find Nadia Wyatt's her condition is very extreme but I thought overall the conditioning wasn't dry 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 with the gaunt faces I thought it was a much what do you think I think that's that's a really key thing to point out, and that's one aesthetic I always try to strive for is just keeping it as just as soft as it can be, but still athletic. Mm. Like that's the athletic little 
bit of conditioning has to be there just to, so you're not looking like the average Joe Snow off the street. You're going to have to have that lean, especially when you're on stage under certain lights. If your body fat is too high, you're going to look fluffy. And you may not be fluffy, but just on the stage, mm. you're going to add some weight perceptively. So I think it's it's been a lot better. Everything has come down because Sandy has done a lot of interviews about what she wants to see for figure, just in terms of full muscle bellies, good conditioning, lines, but not overly striated, things like that. Sandy's been really mm-hmm. clear about what she wants to see, and I think that the judging has followed suit with her guidelines of what she wants to see Sandy for the category. Williams, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. anyway. Mm-hmm. And also, Ray J, she delivers that knockout punch when she does the quarter turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, honestly, guys, I said to you, didn't I? Sid, I said to you, Sydney. I said, Sydney, I've got to tell you, go watch the interview from the, the arena. I said, you've got the best quarter turn in the business, in the business, bar none. <laughs> yeah. I just, <laughs> just she does that little she does that little hip swivel and then it's like she she hits the pose and it's like game over. So you've been dominating now. How do you how do you how's your training? Because I, I, I don't know you that well. How's your training for this Olympia? How's normal prep when, for this Olympia for you? So it's always intense. My intensity never varies. Whether it's improvement season, close the show, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go 150% at all times. Okay. Um, so that, just the years of consistency of doing that same trial um, really helped me because it's really not necessarily a different prep. It's just a matter of continuing to give it 150% every day. Mm. And just that extra year of doing that, that extra month of doing that mm. had helped to change my look and bring it in for this Olympia. Mm. Because yeah. you're still young. Aren't you 26, 27? Or... I just turned 27. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wow, I'm yeah, still a baby. Yeah, yeah. She's got three Olympia titles, man. Three Olympia titles by 27, <laughs> huh? Yeah. Whoa. And a Lionel Classic champion. Yeah. So yeah. what are you going to do to make this sport grow now as the figure Miss Olympia champion? What's the I plans? I just like to give back to like all of my supporters. I do a lot of posing coaching. I travel yes. and making sure mm. that everybody shows what the posing should look like on stage so that everything is just soft and fluid that's what i really do to help mold the figure category into what mm. i think it should be and what sandy wants from the category just making sure that everything is just smooth and flowy that everybody likes to watch it Beautiful. so it's more yeah. of a show mm. versus like hard hitting bodybuilding it should be very showy presentation mm. so i do that but on, t- on top of that i really make sure that I get out into my different communities and do my community service that I'm giving back to people who don't care anything about this sport, no. but they want to be healthier. Mm. So I think the overarching theme of just health worldwide and just in your state alone, you got to start with your state to begin with, but then you can branch out and do more and more. But I think just making sure that everybody is aware of what body good can do to change your life, just what health in general can do to change your life is where I kind of come in and make sure that I give them options, different ways they can go to the stores, do what they need to do, and still be a little bit healthier in their everyday lives. Mm. Regardless of like the sport or not. AJ, this girl is so busy, we only had a 15-minute window that we could squeeze her in. She, <laughs> she, we had to move. I said, can we get you for like 45 minutes? She goes, well, I've got a 15-minute window here. And I said, well, that's better than... I said, you're the Olympia champion. We've got to get you on, even if it's just for 10, 15 minutes. So, Sydney... Um, because we're putting you into um, the Olympia winner special episode. So you're with two other champions that might have won the Olympia. So um, <laughs> this is <laughs> yeah, this is going out on Saturday. So I, I know we, the, the, the window is short, but we will have to get you on again for a proper, maybe get on for a good 45 minutes or an hour. Mm. But um, I'm, I, 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 I appreciate you coming on just for this short amount of time, Sydney. But um, we'll, um, I'll, I'll DM you um, and uh, we'll definitely get you on again. Okay, perfect. Thank y'all for having me. Sydney, any, any sponsors and things like that before you go? We got to give the. You yeah, got yeah. anything? Yes, of course. I want to thank my supplement sponsor, Cage Muscle Supplement. They helped a ton throughout this entire prep. Chris Kessin. In terms of giving me leeway to be able to do everything that I need to do. Um, of course, I want to thank my coaches, um, Damian Segovia with Pro Physiques in Arizona, and then all my friends and family who just helped me and supported me throughout this whole journey. Sydney, always a pleasure. And when are we going to change that Instagram name to your real name? Because oh, it's yeah, hard yeah, to yeah, find yeah, yeah. you, man. I was trying to say he was putting oh. C. I, I said, no, it's C-Y-A-J. And he put C-N or something. Like, <laughs> AJ, come on. I nearly crashed today driving here because oh. I was... Oh. Are you not going to change it? No? Instagram handle name? No? Something no, because I mean, that that's literally what people will call me on the street. Okay. <laughs> oh. they, 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 no joke. They're run up and they're yelling, well, yell from public. It's like, buy the thing. Oh, so a- the anything with an eye, she puts a Y in. That's a, that's a, that's a thing. Well, then, we've got to keep it like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sydney, thank you so much. And we'll get you on uh, for a much longer time uh, in the future. But thank you. Three-time Miss Olympia, Ch- Olympia champion, Sydney Gillen. Appreciate it.
Perfect. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sydney. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Uh, yes, sorry, that's um, that's Sydney. Yeah, because literally I said, well, if we can get you just for 10, 15 minutes, it's uh, it's better than nothing. Great battle with her and... Um, Latoya Watts. What a yeah, battle! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe we can, yeah, we can see that again. Maybe, and hopefully Jessica will be more in the mix as well next year. And, Let's uh, hope so. And uh, also yeah. Ivana. Uh, oh, yes, Vosich. of course. Ivana Vosic, yeah. Mm. Okay, well, that's, um, that's the one of our interviews for our Olympia winner special bonus episode we're doing uh, for this Saturday so I hope you've enjoyed this one and we'll be right back after the break and we are out and welcome back to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Meter Studios joined by my co-host AJ all the way from Norway and we're joined by once again by Carlos de Oliveira. Kaiki. <laughs> A.K.A. Kaiki. Yay. Man. Wow. So when we f- first saw you, yeah. you were a poor little Brazilian boy. <laughs> Fast forward <laughs> six months. Now he's balling. Sponsored with who? Dragon Pharma. Oh, nice. nice. Men's physique first call out against 700 other guys. You were in the first call out. It was only 600. Yeah. <laughs> 25, but yeah. <laughs> and the Italy's most beautiful man in Italy, of course. The men's physique, Yamamoto. What was it called again? <laughs> the Yamamoto Cup yeah. in Italy, yeah. 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 Champion. Yeah. Kaiki. All in six it. months. Hey, All, I, I, yeah, I think we should take credit for it. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So walk us through the Olympia, getting the first call out. Mm. You know, after new, so after the California, that's when we interviewed. That's right. Uh, I won there. Then I figured like mm. only the West Side had seen me, not mm. the East Coast side. So Steve, Tyler, and all those guys, they haven't seen my physique yet. So I decided to do New York Pro, mm. which is I ended up getting fifth there. Mm-hmm. Disappointing. Which I, I was I was happy, but at the same time, once I got off stage, everyone's like, "You looked phenomenal. You yeah. should have placed higher." So then I was like. I got back to the drawing board. I was like, what do I need to do to improve? You know, there's a reason why those guys beat me. Mm-hmm. And they, they told me a little bit more width in the back, maybe a little bit fuller chest. And then I went to work. I worked on my back and they did exactly what they told me and tried coming a little crispier too. Work Without, on your back, you say, as a men's seat competitor. What does that mean? So they wanted more detail. So I have a lot of thickness. Mm. But I guess just because I only been working out for like four or five years now, mm. Mm. hate him. I, I need more time. Just mm. my muscle connection, separation between the traps and the rhomboids. So it's more rowing, you know, just getting back to the gym. <laughs> AJ, as you know, I do. F- I have started to follow men's physique a lot more now because because we've had Kegi on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we've had Ryan Terry. But to be honest. I think he had. I said this, didn't I? I saw you in the um, outside the gift shop in the. Um, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I saw you by the elevators, and I said to me, "You had the best men's physique look in that top six. Even I thought you looked better, than, uh, Ryan Terry. Tall, wide, oh, uh, hair on point, handsome. Better than uh, all the top three. Seriously. Wide on the shoulders, abs really good. Perfect. I think. Oh, <laughs> he's working. <laughs> he's working yeah. Yeah. Are you working, bro? You're at work. Yeah, yeah. Someone's like trying to get in. I'm like, in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Come back in 10 minutes, please. Uh, also, the, the, with Ryan Terry, she could, could have also been a little bit higher at the Olympia, I think. Yeah. Ryan yeah. Terry also looked very good at the Olympia, didn't Ryan he? Looked- yeah, so I I always think he brings crazy conditioning. Mm, and his good. separation, his abs are like absurd. Oh, abs are Ryan Terry's abs. I mean, maybe he got a little more size, but I feel like that would take away from his niche, which is his conditioning. Mm. So, but so, I, overall, I think he has the look as well, you know. Mm. Pretty boy, <clears throat> pretty boy has V taper, crazy conditioning. Every little muscle is there. AJ, you should have seen how happy he looked when I saw him the next morning. He was coming out of the elevator, he had his vest on, and it was. I, I, who were you with? Some other big guys. There were some other guys who were com- competing. Who were they? Um, I'm not sure who I was with at the time. I could have been with Abner. He Probably Abner, taller, light skinned. Classic, yeah. Guys. Big, big, do you know what? I was actually surprised how big they were. Classic. 
Oh, is he classic? Ab- Ab- oh, Abner Logan. Ab- Abner, Abner Logan. Abner Logan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 fantastic. Well, Kayaki, we see you. <laughs> We see you working, Kaiki. We see you at work. So you maybe you should, but we just wanted to have you on. Mm-hmm. Thank you for coming on, even though you're at work. That shows dedication. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you guys give me the opportunity from, since day one, you know. So mm. I have to. They're like, we need you at what is it, three thirty there? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah three forty-four yeah. to be correct. Yeah, yeah. So. I'd, I'd like to compliment you on your excellent Skype connection as well. What's your next show before you go? What's the next show? So I definitely want to do Pittsburgh Pro, but I was talking to my coach, and he thinks it's a it's a it's a good move to do the Arnold. So when's we'll that? When's that? The Arnold when, when, when is it? End of March. Oh, okay, no Arnold then. Yeah, Arnold would be at the end of March. No? Yeah, 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 yeah. So oh, sorry, Arnold then Pittsburgh and then Olympia. No, no. Yeah, pretty much. That's what I have in my mind right now. Mm, so mm. he wants me to do the Arnold. Yeah, I definitely want to do the Pittsburgh. New York's two weeks after. We could do that too. You know, Ooh, just could. Shit. and maybe take revenge on that fifth spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so it's the Arnold first. So I just want to be clear: yeah, yeah. the Arnold's first, and then Pittsburgh. what? Two, th- listen, um, and then afterwards it's Pittsburgh. Yep. How, how long after? Uh, I want to say a month and a half. Right. Okay. And then, and you know, then you might do the New York Pro, but then you want to go back to the Olympia and improve on your sixth place. Yes. Okay, That's well, definitely the main goal is to improve on that sixth place. But I definitely want to, you know, see how I stack up because I'm going to have a couple of months to improve, you know, to yeah. the Arnold. So so what, what are you going to do in terms of improvements to your physique? More back, more back oh, detail. More back, okay. Mm. okay. So, I mean, w- once I got off stage in Italy, uh, mm. I talked to Tyler Manning, which he was the head judge. Mm-hmm. It's like the only thing separating you from the – Entering that top five is a little bit more back, back detail. Okay. Do you know the thing so about we're going to have row. Yeah. We're going to do some more rowing. <laughs> <laughs> rowing and chins. Um, yeah. do you know the thing about Carlos's physique is he looks really good when he actually hits bodybuilding poses. I know, it I know. He really does. I, I saw he draw That's his why, shorts. Yeah, and, the le- and you've got legs. I'm thinking, mm. do you know what? If you ever decide that men's physique isn't for you, mate, you've always got classic. the class, the classic. You'd be yeah. such so it's it's nice that you've got like we 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 interviewed um uh George Peterson last week and he's he's moving from you know people that move from category to category and it's always nice to know that you've got somewhere to go if a that mm-hmm. class is no longer working for you or if you really want to kind of go for it on the you know on on the, the entire physique and then stick some yeah. chunks on and jump up on stage in classic so I mean you're I've, in a very I've good position had... mate you're in a good position very good position yeah I've always had that in the back of my head you know Things, I mean, I just turned pro last year. It's been going so well. <laughs> why why change it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I've always had classic physique in the back of my head as well. How old, I you, mean, know, we, how old it, you know, Carlos? I'm 25 now. Good time. See, you're running out of time, see, at 25. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Carlos, before we go, oh, uh, can right. we see any pulses now? Can we see the men's physique twist there? Yeah, come on. No, yeah. No. No, he's, he's not. He's had too much pasture. Yeah, come on now. Let's see something. <laughs> yeah, come on. Let no, us see. Oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a oh, that's a classic. Okay, classic okay, 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 okay. Well, thank you, Kai. You will see me at the Arnold Classic, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. look good man, improved. good man. We're going to follow your progress, have you on before the Arnold again, and we're proud of... Your a lot of people we talk to just they just say things they're gonna do things and they don't do nothing. But you're doing what you're saying, yeah. and we we're proud of you because of that. And that's why we want to have you on. So thank, thank you thanks so for much. coming on. I, I would say fifth place New York Pro to sixth place Olympia, first place at Yamamoto. That is definitely a guy who is leveling up. He's on the rise. He's on the rise. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. I mean, I I take the feedback and I get to work. You know, there's Good not much to do. Good man. So. That's a good attitude from a, a you know a rising star there. Yeah, Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. We're really pleased to see your progress, mate, and we'll we'll intently follow you as you uh, go to the Arnold Classic Pittsburgh and you know next year. Thank so, you so much, guys. All the very best, mate. And um, thank you. Oh yeah, you get back to work and let that person in. Get some <laughs> stuff. Get some wow. supplements bought. Later. <laughs> bye bye. Take care, mate. Bye bye. Oh, oh, he's clicked the supplement. Success story. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, fifth po- fifth place in the Pro. I saw him at the Olympian. I, to be honest, I, I didn't actually realise it was him at first. Oh, it's Carlos. Carl, uh, I, was, I, you know, you, 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 I was doing Instagram Live and I, was, and I was thinking, and my eyes were drawn. 
your eyes are drawn. I'm like, oh, there's, there's Ryan. He looks good. And, and then I thought, who that? And then I, re- I looked at the number and I had the... Are you all right? Checking your phone? And I looked at the competitor sheet and it was like, oh, it's Carlos. Because, you know, mm. yeah, I, I know him as Kaiki. And it was... Um, I was like, yeah, he's actually... That's the first time I'd seen him on stage. But very, very impressed. Very impressive. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, it's nice to follow up these, uh, these guys and see their continual rise. So, first call out yeah, at Olympia. First call out. And it doesn't, doesn't get much better than that, AJ. Doesn't. M- maybe second. Maybe winning. <laughs> Congratulations to Redmond, Ed- Raymond Edmonds. Yes, fantastic. He looked really good. Tall and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then uh, we'll be right back. Let's a- go. After the break uh, with our next guest on Globe Muscle Radio, and we are out. Out. And welcome back to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Me In the Studios, joined by my co-host, AJ, all the way from Norway. And we're joined by Women's Physique Olympia superstar, Sarah Villegas. <laughs> fan. Right. Fan. Sarah. I got the la- did I get the last name right? Yes, you did. Good job. Oh, good. Okay. Giles. Fan- fantastic job at this Olympia, Sarah. Yes. Thank you. We- Thank you, it was really, uh, we wanted you on before the show, the Olympia show, because we saw you win at that's right. yeah, yeah, Tampa, yeah, was yeah, it Tam- right. Tampa? No, it the Atlantic Coast. Yeah, yeah. Atlantic Coast. Yeah. yeah. And we were so impressed, so we reached out, and you said, no, guys, I don't have time for you now. I got to win the Olympia <laughs> first. <laughs> and now you, you probably the, yeah, the breakout female star at the Olympia. Yeah. Have to be you. Yeah, 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 I'd say that's fair. I haven't heard that compliment before, but thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, that, because so. we were expecting uh, Natalia Coelho and uh, Danny, what's her name? Danny. Um, uh, oh, Danny Castillo. To be thank the you. top three, but With you Shanique. really. And there's some people, especially from the back against Shanique. Oh. You're just, it's like, you got her from the back, that's for sure. <laughs> I worked really hard on that this last year. So, again, you know, thank you for that. But yeah, that was definitely something that. Coming from last year's Olympia, um, going into this year's contest season as a whole, and specifically, obviously, the Olympia, um, my coach, Ali, and I, we worked really hard um, on back training and trying to get it up and develop it. And so I guess it paid off. So that's good. So for the sake of the viewers, do you want to, I mean, we'll, we'll talk, we'll, come up, we'll lead up to the Olympia in a little bit, and obviously your pro win this year. But let's, let's t- talk a little bit about your amateur career and uh, your, you know, taking you up to this point now. T- tell us about that. Yes. Um, actually, it's my... I guess competitive career is pretty young. I actually did my first uh, local show in 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the Ranch Warren Classic. I won the overall, and then I jumped into my first national show the very next year. Um, I did uh, Team Universe in 2017, won my pro card, mm-hmm. um, and then waited a whole nother year again before going into Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2018, that was my pro debut. Mm. I won that, and then 10, 12 weeks later, I did my first Olympia. Um, place there. Sorry, uh, what, what place? Sorry, you broke up there. Sorry, what did you say? What what placing did you get at last year's Olympia? Tenth place. Tenth okay. place. Wow. Okay, okay. That's a uh, great jump then from from tenth to second. Also, the girls are have improved this year also. Yeah, it was a good year this so, year. Good year. Yes, absolutely. Definitely. I w- and I would agree. I, I think it was, you know, a, a very competitive lineup this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. And obviously, I did the Atlantic Coast Pro um, earlier this year and then followed by the Olympia. So, I mean, you uh, made uh, you made serious improvements from last year. I remember, I remember seeing your physique last year and thinking you were good. And then I saw, um, I think I posted some pictures on the forum. I commented on them on the forum. Betty's in. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was like, "Look at this guy." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, he yeah. posted a thread. Didn't oh, he? he was in. Well, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. He was in. Love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then obviously at the Olympia, I was just like, because uh, like you said, I was kind of. You kind of sometimes the the Olympias, you know, especially when you know that the. You know that the main girls are kind of becoming. I knew that um, Coelho was going to come back better. She'd won the she'd won the Arnold, you know, and Shanique, you know, is always going to be good. And it's like it's it's really exciting when you see these kind of new faces, like yourself, relatively new faces, just coming in and being like first call out. So what was that like? You know, when you got that, you know, that that first look and you thought, I'm really in the mix here. You know, it was pretty exciting um, because I'll. I'll Rewind back to last year's Olympia. Um, you know, I up and so last year's Olympia was my worst placing ever. Um, you know, out of my like I said, relatively short career. So going into the Olympia, I was uh, I'm talking about Olympia last year. Mm-hmm. 
it was exciting and it was new and there was, you know, it was a little bit overwhelming, I'll admit. Um, and then in retrospect, when I was looking back, it was not my best performance. Um, so I was pretty confident going into this year's Olympia because um, I was very, very pleased with the package that I had brought to the Atlantic coast. You know, again, Ali and I, my coach, we kind of sat down and took the whole year and just kind of reworked everything. Um, and so we made sure that Atlantic coast was perfect. We really, like I said, we liked um, the look that we brought. And so we just worked really hard to duplicate that. And we felt like we actually even um, improved it and brought an even better package. Mm. So I was really confident going in, but it definitely was, you know, it was pretty exciting. Like you said, you know, when you feel mm. that, you know, when you hear your name called and you're in that first lineup, um, that first lineup, you're like, okay, this is it, it's happening. So, you know, everything has paid off. So it was good. It was really exciting. Um, and, you know, I, yeah, it's, it, was, it was a lot of fun. What, what made you choose physique, women's physique? Did you, you've done that right from day one from the Branch Warren show, yeah? Yeah, I did. Um, you know, it was, I guess it was kind of just something um, always. I remember, so my, he's now my husband, but Ali, he's the one who kind of introduced me into bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, you know, back when I first started lifting, I guess I would say I've been lifting seriously for maybe seven years, um, when I say oh. meaning like formally for, you know, the sake of competing in bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, and we would be at the gym sometimes and people would say, you know, oh, are you going to, you know, do a show just to kind of get experience or, you know, whatever, kind of get your feet wet. And we said, no, no, we're going to wait till we're ready. Um, and I really like lifting weights. Um, he has a, you know, obviously he's a bodybuilder. So that background of, you know, kind of heavy lifting and more muscularity. So it was, I've always been drawn to it. Um, and then of course, as the category kind of um, was born, I guess, and you have Juliana and things like that, take it to front runner, you know, obviously she has a beautiful. So I love Juliana, <laughs> Sorry, she's amazing, well, she's perfect. She, she has an incredible physique. Yeah, and so that kind of maybe, I think what drew, drew me to that. But yeah, I did physique since day one um, and, and I love it and you know, it's, I just, I think it's a really great balance of, you know, being feminine yet, you know, lifting weights and like, what, I really like to lift heavy, so. One thing I've noticed, I'm looking at you now and I've seen your physique, you've got, I mean, I, you look really young and you've got like, a, a, there's a look to your muscle, there's a look to your physique with the clean separation, the clean lines. I'm looking at your skin and your hair now. You seem to have a really like youthful kind of clean look to your physique. And I think that's part of why you stood out so much. Like a, a friend of mine, a bodybuilder, a British bodybuilder called Jason Corrick. You won't know him. He's a well-known British bodybuilder. And he posted a picture of you on uh, Facebook about three days ago. And it was your rear double bicep. And the comments were like, what? it was like that fresh kind of youthful muscularity. You know that kind of, when you see, like Dennis Wolf 2007 and everything's kind of just popping. No, I'm really excited. After I saw you on the show and I saw your interview, I think it was Maximum Report, whatever. It's the aura, it's the champion aura you have. And then I checked your Instagram and I saw your husband who's also a bodybuilder and I saw you training with him. Yeah. And there's no, what can I call? There's no Instagram selling on Instagram, if you know <laughs> what I mean. That it's athlete all the way. Your routine was, uh, well, everything, it can be a pro, but it was a nine out of 10. It was really good. Your, did you see your routine? Well, I was there. It was fantastic <laughs> routine. So you, you, it's the professionalism yeah. I also, and this is, uh, we're excited for the future, Sarah. We're, we're really, very excited. We're really <laughs> excited. Yeah. So that's why we wanted you on, you know, for people to, uh, you need more hype, Sarah. Yep, basically. Well, you know, Adrian, you made a good point. Um, and obviously, you know, I do this for fun. And, you know, but this is um, obviously you can make a really good career out of it. But, you know, you said that there's a really strong element of professionalism. Correct. And I'm, it's true. I'm not polished, super polished. Um, active on the social media. And that's not necessarily anything that's, you know, I sit down and say, oh, I'm not going to do Instagram or Facebook. But when I train, I'm, I'm training for the stage. I'm not necessarily training for, for my Instagram page. Um, mm. So between, you know, work, um, you know, we own a transformation clinic here in Dallas. And so between, you know, managing over 100 heads for clients and doing my workouts and cardio, sometimes I'm training twice a day. There's not necessarily like a lot of extra time for yeah. social media or anything like that. But, you know, it's, um, you know, just long story short, I, I do, I take my training seriously and I practice a lot to make it look so easy on stage because mm. it's definitely, definitely not. I, oh, sorry, um, where are you based? And when you say transformation clinic, what do you mean? 
Uh, so we're here in Dallas, Texas. Oh, okay, um, from Dallas. And, okay. Yeah, Transformation Clinic, basically, um, you know, people come to us wanting to achieve a physical transformation. Okay. A lot of times it's they're overweight, um, but we do have a lot of people who come in thin and wanting to build up muscle. But basically we just, you know, share the, the knowledge, that the nutrition and the workout knowledge that we have, um, especially kind of it's unique because we have a – competition background so we're able to get our body fat really really low and you know experts obviously at building muscle so we apply those same tools to the you know the people that we work with and it's it's actually really rewarding so tell us the um, address where is it how can we for people in dallas where is it the address so people can contact you and get this thing started so the name of the of our company is afs premier fitness um and i guess the address is one two seven four zero merit drive dallas texas okay cool. But um, and the website, the, well, the website is probably a much easier way to find it. Just afspremier.com. So. Is um, your, so uh, AJ said your husband's a bodybuilder. Is he a good bodybuilder? <laughs> I'm sorry, what is, is that? Your, your husband is he um, AJ and yourself? He you said he's a, a bodybuilder. So what what level does he compete at? Um, so he won the Texas State, I believe it was um, the year before last. Mm-hmm. And so his next step is um, going to be nationals. I think maybe. Okay. Um, sometime later next year, probably. But, but your trophies are definitely bigger than his. <laughs> well, Sto- you know, story of my life, <laughs> mate. <laughs> it's it's funny that you should say that because I actually my swords are uh, my medals are all swords, so I don't really necessarily have a lot of trophies, but okay. I have a lot of swords. So, yeah. so I guess it's fair. Yeah. So what's next? What's the next move now? Mm. What do you do now after getting second place at the Olympia? What's going to happen second now? Place. Yeah, that's amazing. a big, yeah, that's amazing. amazing. Well, I have a whole year to just get myself better. Um, you know, I obviously the sites are laser focused on Olympia for next year. I am going in for that first place title. Um, you know, I know second place is a great achievement, and I'm definitely very happy and grateful for the placing that I got. But you know, I don't compete for second. This is <laughs> this is way too hard to just settle and, and be okay with second place. So I'm definitely going in for the first spot next year. You t- yeah. Um, hang on, hang on. What about what about the Arnold Classic? What's that? What about the Arnold Classic? Uh, we've given it some thought. I haven't necessarily made a decision on that yet. Um, you know, if it, if it fits the plan yeah. for the Olympia, um, you know, I'll rewind and back. And I, when I said, you know, my I've been training for seven years, but I've competed since 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we waited four years and we said, no, you're not going to get on stage until you're ready. Um, wow. Everything. Yeah. Awesome. Everything you do has to, you know, Sarah. Yeah. Hang on. I've, I've, I've had an idea. Sarah is smart. I She's going to take a full year off and come at the Olympia and take out Shanique Grant <laughs> once and for all. <laughs> and you can't do that if you do Arnold because there's too much. AJ, I've had an idea. Olympia and then the rock show in uh, three weeks later. Because they're doing That's women's physique idea. there and it's big prize money. What was that? After three weeks later, you said what? The, you know, the, the Dwayne Johnson, the rock show is three weeks after the Olympia and all categories. And it's you'll probably get more money. or at least the same prize money that you would win from winning first place at the Olympia. Yeah. So, kuching. Do- so, so, it's still up in the air. We'll see what happens. But, <laughs> well, we'll know, sign the contracts for you. Definite plans, right? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, we just wanted to have you on because we were really impressed, Sarah. Yes. Really impressed by your routine, by your physique your prof- professionalism mm-hmm. and uh, we want people to get to know you better we want to get to know you better best readable bicep in the business oh fantastic fantastic i think it took out shanique from the readable bicep yeah, that's yeah, one of her yeah, best yeah, shots yeah, 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 that yeah. was the shot where where everyone just went whoa this girl's in contention yeah. seriously seriously i was there <laughs> so anything you want to say last words any sponsors any not shout outs <laughs> any last words <laughs> 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 I guess the same shout out that I always do, you know, I give to my husband. Um, He's the one who not only introduced me to the sport, but he's carried me here. Um, And then, you know, just, I'm I'm just very grateful for for the league and for, you know, just everything that's happened. Um, The way that the women's physique category has grown, obviously we were this year, which was, you know, a huge accomplishment for us. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a, a huge accomplishment for all the categories, being able to walk you know, the, the, the main Joe Weider stage. So that was definitely great. Yes. Um, and it was just icing on the cake, I guess. So, mm-hmm. so I'm just grateful for the, for the growth of the category and just to be in a position where, you know, I can say, you know, hey, I'm, I'm coming for the title. So. Okay. Can your husband quickly say hi? Because I can see you looking at him. Yeah, can we see <laughs> you? <laughs> come on. <laughs> Does your husband want to come on camera and say hello? Come on. Get, just poke your head around, man. Come on. No, is your husband holding the camera right now? 
Oh no! Actually, <laughs> oh, I thought he was there. I thought I, I saw thought he some, was there. I thought I saw a shadow come in. I thought that was somebody. We want there. to see him on camera, but he's not there, huh? Yeah. I have the window open, so maybe that's like oh, yeah. the bird. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, my mistake. My mistake. My mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, then, Sarah. Well, um. Honestly, I'm absolutely thrilled. It was like, it's, it's always nice to see new faces and, yeah. and it really adds excitement to all the categories when you see someone jump from 10th to 2nd. And like, you know, it was really like, it was a real sort of talking point, you know, because like mm. I said, I was there front row watching and I was so impressed. It was, um, I, you know, it was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was unexpected in a good way and it was yeah. very, very well deserved, Sarah. Thank you, guys. So uh, okay, well we'll um, yeah we'll have to get you on again before the Olympia next year and before the Rock Show. So uh, <laughs> hopefully gear you up for those uh, those two first places next year. That's right. All, All right, right so thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! And not that that's that important, but very feminine I compared just, to the other physique girls. Man. I mean, <laughs> say it. Very, I mean, how can I put this? <laughs> how can I put this? The, okay, I'll say it. The, the hair, the skin. The jaw is she, impact. <laughs> I, I'm trying to be very diplomatic here. She yeah. looks amazing because to have that level of muscularity, uh, conditioning, like I said, she's got a very fresh, healthy look. Which is so important. <laughs> Sunglasses on. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so important, and I just think I think that's because she looks very young as well. I'm so impressed. Shanique, she's Coelho. She, I mean, those girls. That's she looks like. I would say 25, 26. She's the female version of Kobe Bryant. Who's that? The most professional basketball player of all time. She's very professional. Okay. Okay. Well, no, no. What an amazing future. I'm a little bit disappointed she's not doing any more pro shows because I think she'd no, win no. a ton of them next year. She can beat Shanique next year. Got to make some improvements then. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah honestly, yeah, it's just absolutely amazing athletes. So I just, I think it's important to feature these new, these up and comers because you know she could be the next in line, AJ. Who's she's... the other up and comer you like if you move a Zeke? Mine is. I oh, have one. Shika, Shika. Well, Shinik got Shika got tenth last year. Maybe she could jump up to second. I like that Russian girl. Oh, uh, Van, uh, Valentina Machina. Oh, very good at stage yeah, presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was fantastic. Very right? good she was. Yeah, there was, uh, women's physique was in. Um, was really good, actually. And it's, it's nice to see. It's not that I like to see people like Coelho get big, but, you know, sometimes it was predictable. It was like, oh, that's always going to be one and two because they're so clear, like in the figure with uh, Sydney and all the... You don't, they're always the same. Fi- so it's nice when someone just comes out of nowhere and nearly takes out the champ. Someone that they think is... Like people say, oh, Shanique's just unbeatable. No one's unbeatable, AJ. So... Thank you to Sarah Vegas. She said Vegas. It's, well, yeah, I got it right. So, most development. Muscular development. Pump media. <laughs> Global Muscle Radio. And high we'll be tech. Right, we'll be high tech pharmaceuticals, our wonderful sponsor. And we'll be right back after the break with our next guest on Global Muscle. And we are out. We are out. And welcome back to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Meter Studios. Joined by my co-host, AJ, all the way from Norway. And we're joined by the surprise, the, the star of the, the Olympia. The, oh, 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 we've lost him. The <laughs> breakout performance at the Olympia, Patrick, Patrick Moore. Moore. Oh. <laughs> I got, we, we, we need to like, we need to bow. In. So Patrick, huh? Wow. Giles, what were you thinking when Patrick came out? Well, because you were there. It was... For me, <laughs> yes, I, I was there. You weren't. <laughs> yeah. um, for me, that was. I'm trying to think of anyone that really uh, in the open class. I think you were the one that everyone was talking about in terms of someone that we did expect you to look good, but we didn't expect you to be like kind of the talk of the show. Mm, mm, you know, um, I mean, it was like tenth uh, place. I, I had you. I'll, I'll be honest. I had you swap with Cedric at least. So I had you. At, yeah. I mean, Sean Ray had you sixth. I would have swapped you with Cedric quite happily. But honestly, mate, what a performance. I mean, it was... Oh. I'm Sorry, I'm just talking a lot here, but oh. it was the tan, the condition, the, the separation, the posing routine. You were so polished, so... You put so much into every single aspect. Um, just uh, just an amazing job, mate. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit speechless, mate, and, honestly. And, and it wouldn't have been such a good exper- uh, performance if the routine 
hadn't been as good as it was. Yes. Because we look at yes. the whole. If you're a pure bodybuilding fan, you need a routine too. Yeah. And yeah. that routine, Labrada helped you out, correct? Yeah. Yeah, he actually choreographed that whole routine. Yeah, so yeah, 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 we were yeah. really excited about it. I mean, we spent a lot of time working on it. And uh, it, it was, I actually didn't nail it 100% like I wanted to, mm. but only people that would know that would be me and Lee. Yeah, and yeah. If you guys know Lee, he's he's super perfectionist. perfectionist. I mean, you know, just down to every single detail. But uh, we were super excited about it. We knew we were going to, it was going to be something different. Mm. And so he's put a lot of time in that. You know, it's not something that a lot of guys nowadays really focus on. So we wanted to be a little bit different in that aspect as well because some people don't go to the prejudging. They Mm-hmm. actually only go to the night show so we wanted to give them something that they could see and they could appreciate mm. so what was it like i mean you're the california pro this year this was your first olympia what was that like being in your first mr olympia ever it was an experience i mean i didn't realize really how amazing it was until after the fact and you know the impact that i made and the statement you know that the physique i brought to the stage how how people felt about it I was excited about it, but I was actually, you know, prepped mentally by Lee, by Phil, to to keep the nerves down. Mm -hmm. So I really approached it mentally as another competition, although I knew it was the top of the top. Mm -hmm. But, man, it was surreal. I mean, it was – I had seen these same guys uh, Mm -hmm. for years Mm -hmm. on, you know, YouTube and uh, watching them on live streams and backstage. So for me to actually be back there with them walking down that long hallway – that was a good feeling in itself. I'm like, hey, man, this is the top of the top. You know, it's like the last last little part of the mountain. And once you get backstage, it's like you're here now. So it was it was an experience. It's funny. I talked to some of the competitors and they said, like, you know, a lot of the first time competitors and they say it really becomes real when they get those track suits. You know, yeah. they're like they're holding it. It's like I've done it. I've actually it's like getting that medal when you get on stage. It's like an acknowledgement that you've it's reality. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was for me. Once I got there and we did athlete check in on Wednesday mm-hmm. uh, and I saw all those guys, it, it was just like, OK, man, this is <laughs> this is what you've been working for. Yeah. So when I actually got a chance to be on stage and I saw all those people and all those lights, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, started bodybuilding late. Yeah. Super athlete when young, fresh system, mentored by Phil Heath. Prepped by Lila Brada, can pose, mm-hmm. arms gi- gigantic, lines <laughs> and shape perfect. Patrick, huh? Amazing. This is like yeah. bod- this yeah. is like bodybuilding. It's like this is something we used to read about when we were younger. You know, this is yeah. like this is something special. But Patrick, now it, now we will see what you're made of because this show was uh, there was a lot of guys missing, a lot of people not showing up in condition. Next year will be the real test, huh, Patrick? Oh, most definitely. You know, I tell people, I'm just a few years into this. And I made those changes from no one expected me to look as good as I did in California. And that was not Mm. even, that wasn't, you know, that was okay. It was good enough for the win. Mm. And I made those changes from California to Olympia in just a couple of months. Mm. So guys have to really put in perspective, what am I going to do with the whole year? Because I'm just now learning my body. I... Me and Chris, we're just now kind of – me and Chris have only been together two years. Wow. Some of these guys have been with their coaches much longer. They've been training a lot longer. Mm. They've been competing a lot longer. So I'm really just a baby in this, and I, I'm going to keep getting better. So next year, I'm up for the competition. I mean, I'm the guy that – I want those top guys. Chris That's who? why my first competition. Chris yeah. Mm. Sorry, what was and, you um, know, for me – oh, go ahead. Sorry. What was um, uh, Lila Brada – what was his feedback on on what you delivered on stage? He, he you know, of course, Lee saw me ahead of everyone. He saw me when Chris was seeing him. He, he saw me on a daily basis leading up to the competition. He told me we actually did an, an interview together right after the California Pro. And he told me then, uh, he said, which is funny, you said you swapped me with Cedric. He said, I think you're going to be in that top six or seven. Yeah, and yeah. he told me that I was going to shock a lot of people. Because he knows me. I mean, he's been around me. He's seen me train. And he knows my mentality to work hard and, you know, my, my ambition to just beat everyone. So he knew that I, that time I had in between that and California, I wasn't just going to lay down and say, hey, this is – I'm just going for the experience. I just want to see what it's like. No, I'm I'm going to make a statement. That was the purpose, you know. So I had there I, – I, I said it in an interview. I said I would have loved for Phil or Sean, all those guys to be there. 
I have to see the best yeah, to yeah, line up yeah. with the best so that I can beat the best. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't look at this as an opportunity. Oh, you can move up placing. No, bring those top guys. I right, welcome that yeah. competition. Those guys are my brothers. I learn from <laughs> those guys. And, you know, I, I have to be with them on stage. Charles has something very important to say now, I can I'm tell. Just, I'm, I'm thinking about it now because I know Sean Ray had you sixth, but that means he would have had you ahead of Steve Kuklo. Steve Kuklo is a very, very big guy. What... I would, I had him. I would have had you. I had no argument. I think a fair place would have been seventh. I mean, literally, that's how I saw it. Respect Where, Joaquin Williams, though. Joaquin, I want to see Hakeem. Yeah, yeah, I want yeah, to see Hakeem, Kuklo, and Patrick. The risers. Because I didn't see you guys enough to know. Like, I gotta yeah, give yeah. Uh, different sort of. Uh, you gotta give respect well. to Hakeem Williams because Hakeem Williams brought yeah, it. He did. He did. He, and, and Lou, a, yeah. Yeah, he's he's a big guy, yeah. and uh, we actually had a chance to line up next to each other because they did the call outs a little different um, on the confirmation round on the night show versus you know Friday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on Friday I was in the group that I was in, and that was a different group. I, on Friday I believe I was in a group maybe with John and Juan. It was a different group for sure because on Saturday was the first time I think I lined up with Cedric and Akeem. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really get to get in a mix together. It was just for a short time. And I mean that's that's okay. I'm sure I'll see those guys on stage again. But um, you know they 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 all look great. Those guys are, are they're veterans. They're they're seasoned at this sport, and you know I learn from those guys, and I I want their spots every every last nine from nine to one. You know I want those guys' spots. Because uh, at home watching at home, uh, the most talked about thing at the Friday was people were pissed that you did not get no f second call. It was third. Friday, remember yeah. he got third call outs. He didn't even yeah, get a was... chance to come in the second call out, remember? And I'm sat I'm jacked. I have so much going on. Okay, Friday night, uh Patrick didn't get no call outs, not even one. Okay. Nothing. No. Last call out. No. Okay. And Saturday they started giving him some call outs yeah. and, and then he got tenth. Yeah. Meaning yeah. Friday they didn't they didn't even so look he, at him. He moved up, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Which was crazy because on Friday I I feel uh, I believe Chris, my coach, feels the same way that I was. I was better on Friday. Correct. We shoot. We shoot to to peak on prejudging because we know that's our opportunity to line up with all these guys. Like that first look, that's gonna that first impression is gonna be important. So mm. that's when we get our mandatories by ourselves on stage. That's when you said, like you said, we get the callouts. But for some reason, I didn't make it into those top callouts, mm, and no I wanted call that because I wanted to, to line up with those guys. And then the next night when we came back. That's when they put me in a different callout group, which I, I believe was right. a mix between the second and third callout group. But I didn't get to line up with anyone else other than that, unfortunately. What was the? Um, did you see the scores from the different rounds? Yeah, I I just remember um, I got a glimpse of the scores because what was funny is, so th no one knows no one knows about this um, on Saturday at the finals, right? Uh, that group that we had it was me, Cedric, Akim, and Luke. Yeah. So, Lucas, you mean. when they when they called the uh, the top ten, they came backstage and they announced the top ten. Okay. Right. Well, I, they didn't call me in the top ten, so I went ahead and yeah, I went ahead and left. So I went out to the hallway. <laughs> I met my family because I didn't know. And so even Luke and uh, his training partner, child, they said, "Hey, you're not in the top ten. I said, "I guess not." They didn't call my name, and so he said, "Well, you should probably go double check." So I went over to one of the expediters, the guy that had the list, yeah. and I said, hey, you didn't call Patrick Moore, right? And he said, no, no Patrick Moore. I said, okay. So I just grabbed my bags and because I figured that was that. But how many guys were called out, though? There was only must have been only nine guys called out then. No, they had Luke out there, I think, in the top ten. Oh. So I woke up to the next morning to a ton of messages, a ton of, ton of messages. Sorry, sorry, Lu a, Luke or Lucas. Sorry, comments. sorry, sorry um, Patrick. Luke or Lucas, can we clarify? Luke. Luke, not Luke. Luke, send up. Right, okay. okay. Yeah, not Luke. Sorry, Lucas. I just Luke. wanted to be clear. Yeah. On that. Okay. No, 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 you're fine. So I woke up to a ton of messages. It was like 6 a.m. and my phone was going crazy. Mm. And I was like, okay, what's going on? So I, I picked it up and everyone was like, hey, you're 10. You're, you're in 10th place. You're not in 11. So apparently someone backstage messed up and <laughs> they happens, had happens. everything. Yeah, they had it all mixed up. So um, I got a glimpse of the scorecards and I saw, think I saw something like 55. Um, so I didn't get a total of what was what because I was so overwhelmed at that time. So I actually need to probably go back and check and see what my score was. Yeah. Okay. But hopefully they, they the judges saw their mistake after Friday, maybe. I after... know sometimes you do see these things. I've, I saw it once where in the amateur when Kamal hadn't been top five. 
Uh, and then he ended up getting second. I've seen it happen. I've no, I'm meaning with the call outs. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm right. probably sure the entire arena harassed those judges after Friday <laughs> and tell them why the yeah. FA ain't Patrick Moore ain't this. What's go? What the hell is going on? Uh, robbery. Yeah, between, and then they said, <laughs> okay, the let's put him in. But they should have known. He's yeah, with were pitchforks and burning torches. Yeah, but he's with Lee Labrada. And the judges. He's with Asito Labrada and Heat, and they don't even know who he is. I don't see a point. Yeah, it was it was crazy. I mean, that, that it was a lot. Of, it was a lot of flack online because um, everyone was blowing up my page, and they were like different people that didn't even know who I was. They were just like, "Wow, wow, wow!" Mm. And my my following went up like forty thousand in a couple of days. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and not like those bot followers that the other guys do, huh? <laughs> yeah, it, it went about? crazy, man. And everybody, there was not any negative feedback, and wow. everyone just couldn't understand. Why didn't it have me out, you know, first in the first call out group? But it didn't bother me. Like I said, I I just roll with the punches every time. I'll take it on the chin and I just come back better. So it didn't uh, bother me. I think in terms of feedback, it was when you did your routine and the crowd was roaring. Absolutely oh, yeah. roaring. Oh, it was they? like this guy's this guy's made the statement. I think he's that all athletes would love to make it the Olympia. You know, when you you're kind of saying what you want to achieve and everything like that, and and you did it. You did it. I mean, so few athletes really, really bring what they say they're going to deliver. And he did. He did absolutely. Mm. I said the tan, the presentation, the condition, the readable biceps. I remember everybody going, "Whoa!" It was like really like mm. shit. <laughs> so what's the plan now? When's the next show? Yeah. What's the future? So we are, for? we are definitely, um, we're aiming for the Arnold. That's what we want next. Uh, <laughs> so we're, we're already hard back at work. I'm already kind of back in the soft prep right now because I don't like to go. When something like the Olympia happens and I get a good result yeah. th and it's not quite the result I want, even if it was the result I want, every time I'm always looking to do better. Yeah. So we're already back at it. You know, they want to see a little bit bigger Patrick Moore. Well, that's mm. exactly what they're going to get. And I told them, every time you see me, I'm going to be better. Mm. And every time I tell you I'm going to deliver, me it. and Chris are going to over-deliver. It's going to get so, bigger, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So, you know, and I'm going to get bigger and I'm going to keep the lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to show a lot of people that it is possible to do it. You just have to, you know, you have to train like an old school bodybuilder. And I feel like if you pay attention in the off season to how you're eating, how you're dieting, how you're training, yeah. you can bring that type of physique that people will say, wow, now, now that's bodybuilding. So that's my goal in this whole scheme of things. So I'm going to be here at least 10, 11 years. So people better go ahead and just strap in for the long haul because <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Are you still training your arms every day? <laughs> I actually. <laughs> I hope so. Do you mean yeah. even, even bigger? Yeah. Yeah. I, I dial back to four times a week. Yeah. Oh, I just four times. He's slacking. Chris, he's slacking. He's slacking. <laughs> well, so, Pat. Oh. oh, no, no. You're good, AJ. Well, uh, Giles, we well, just yeah, wanted. Honestly, it was just. It was, it was, honestly, it was, it was. It really, like, I think seeing Hattie in the show. You know, and like you know, and seeing Brandon kind of like what we wanted him to, oh, you know, to see him win. And it fantastic. was just, it was like, it was just such an excitement to see someone that wasn't a major name going in, but at, you know, in terms of whether it was tenth or seventh or sixth or fifth, you made a statement. You did your job. Mm -hmm. You improved, and that that alone, like I said, put the placing aside. You, I, it, you just, you did your job. Mm. You did your job. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. And that's what made me the most excited about it. Is yeah. Everyone. They felt like I was so bummed out. There was videos that was made, and I'm like, guys, you do realize that last year I was 13th at the New York Pro. I couldn't even get a first call out. So it and a, year, a few either. years back, you know, a few years back, I, I was 18th at Nationals. Oh. So 10th place at the Olympia, you know, when it's 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 that's not that's nothing for me to be down about. And you know, I knew going into the show that was a huge driving force for me. Like you said, Giles, it was. I wasn't a big name. I wasn't in anyone's prediction. Uh, people were, the Olympia is going to be boring. It's going to be blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All this, there was so much negative yeah. that was surrounding the Olympia because we had our missing, our brothers that weren't in the show. Agree, you know, agree. Show. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, you know what? I think it's our responsibility, us athletes that are in the show, to bring the best we can. Mm -hmm. So this way people can say, now, you know what? That, that was actually a really good Olympia. The yeah. title was up for grabs. You know, it was anybody show? Then it was like you said, Hadi came in, so there was just some excitement. So after it was over, I'm like, "Hey, man, you couldn't have asked for anything better. You yeah. looked great. You delivered on a package you wanted. Amazing. You got a chance to meet all the guys. They were all encouraging. Every one of those guys, Juan, John, Akim, Brandon, Cedric. You know, those guys welcomed me in. 
and it was just an amazing experience, man. You know, you you brought the excitement, and there's people like. I mean, could he be like the new Ronnie Coleman and literally move to the top of the pack in a couple of years, you know? Mm, I don't like that. Uh, ref- I don't... People always... No, I'm, uh, a, no, I mean, as in someone who's literally, like he said, like 16th at the Nationals and then, you know, he, this is someone that is moving up. That's my point. That's the reference, I mean. We've seen a lot of bodybuilders come and go, Patrick, but I really believe you have the it factor. You have the... You have the genetics, but you also have the drive. As long as you stay away from uh, girl problems and uh, <laughs> yeah, or getting yeah, yeah, seriously, all bodybuilders, yeah, yeah. the, the great men in the derails past them, have all derails. fallen because of girls. Keep. Well, I tell you what, if if I have girl problems, we could blame it on my wife because I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> and just keep the hunger and stay humble. Yeah. This will. Uh, we might looking at the next what next, Mister? Li- yeah. Can Patrick Moore win the Olympia in the future? Let's see in a couple of years. Seriously. Let me let me let me just answer that for you, Giles. I'm going to win the Olympia. Oh, I'm telling you. Wow. I'm telling you that right now. I yeah. am going to win that title. But you, do you and, know what it is? You can always guarantee. You can always um, rely on the guys that you know are going to keep improving. Like you like Sean Claret in the two twelve. Every year he's moved up. Do, 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 do. Can you say that one more time for the people at home? <laughs> I'm I'm going to win the Olympia. There you go. And I'm telling you that. And that's not a shot against any of the other guys, but I'm hungry and I don't stop. I train like I've never won anything and I'm going to keep doing that and I'm going to keep improving. And every time I get on that stage, they, I'm just going to, they're not going to be able to deny me. So like, and I have the right people around me. You just have to think, like you said, I have Lee, I have Phil, all these guys that they're, it's like this big mixture and the only result is to end up at the top. Yeah. Where in America are you from again? I just forgot. Where in America are you from Texas. again? In Texas. Texas. Yeah. Same as Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can so you... I'm down here with... Can I'm you... down here with Steve. I'm going to have to take a trip up to Dallas and go see Steve and train with him a little bit. <laughs> oh, Steve... Um, <laughs> uh, Weinberger. Cook, Cook, no, Cook, oh, Cook, Cook Oh, yeah, Cook Weinberger's from New York. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Cook, Cook, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll see a rematch at the Arnold. So, Kuklo versus Patrick Moore at the Arnold Classic. Yeah, yeah. What's going to happen when you... 2020. What's going to... Are you going to beat Kuklo at the Arnold Classic? I'm Steve, I'm coming for you, man. Oh! I know you're watching. <laughs> we gotta build these rivalries. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta build them. something. You gotta b- brings out the best of the athletes when yeah, they got yeah, that yeah, competitive yeah. drive. You know, like the it really it really adds the spark. Yeah, yeah. we like Steve like a lot, though. Oh, we awesome. like yeah, man, No, I want to see it's an epic battle. Mm. Yeah, like I said, man, those guys, all those guys are my brothers, man. So mm. I learned from them. You know, they push me when they don't know that they're pushing me. So I hope I'm doing the same. I mean, <laughs> mm. I'm 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 coming for their spots. So yeah. I, I know they're going to be training hard. I'm going to be training hard too. Nothing more needs to be said. Yeah. Nothing more. Can, <laughs> can you leave us with an arm shot, Patrick? No, nothing more, Mr. Can Moore. you leave? Uh, Just listen, look. Boom! Oh, that's some arms. Bigger than his head. Yeah. <laughs> Any shout outs before you go? Any sponsors? Any? Um, of course, man. Like, uh, shout out to, to Labrada and Lee. Oh. At they, those guys. He has been absolutely just a huge, huge part of this Classic. thing that I'm doing. Um, of course, Phil. Yo, know, he's always somebody I can turn to. He's always in my ear, mm. telling me to bring my best. You know, of course, my wife, family, friends, everyone that came out to Olympia, and all the fans. You know mm. that that support me, that push me, the new followers, the the old followers. Uh, we're just gonna keep getting better. We're gonna grow this thing into something great until we get to the top of that mountain. Keep an eye on this guy. He is he is on the rise. 100%. Yep. 100%. Patrick, um, I'm just looking forward to seeing what you bring in March, mate, at the Arnold Classic. I'm absolutely thrilled. Absolutely yeah, thrilled. Yeah. It's like all eyes yes, are sir. on Patrick Moore now. Uh, all eyes on me. Okay. That's too <laughs> you know. Sorry. I'm... You don't know. <laughs> if you want to sing Five Finger Death Punch. Oh, <laughs> no Five Finger what? Phil Heath likes Five Finger Death Punch. Anyway, yeah, Patrick, but... thank you so much. And uh, I can't wait to see what you're going to bring in March, mate. Really excited. All right, my man. It'll be great, guys. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Bye-bye. Cheers, mate. All righty. Bye-bye. 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 We got to go because we have somebody very important. We waiting. have the... We, have we don't the... say it. Don't say it because it's not in this episode. It's not a special episode. That was last week. <laughs> I'm getting confused. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah we... This is oh, how we, Patrick Moore. We, this is how we do things. Yes, fantastic. Champ. Um, absolutely. One of the um, one of the biggest... biggest Surprises. Surprise, not well, surprise, but one of the best things about 2019 uh, the pro bodybuilding scene. I mean, what a, like I said, he drew like that. Oh. He added so much excitement when he came. Everyone, everyone was talking about this guy. Mm. Everyone was talking about this guy. And AJ, we are out. out. Yeah, buddy. And
and welcome back to MD Globe Muscle Radio here at the Pump Meter Studios, joined by my co-host AJ, all the way from Norway, and we're joined by 2019 female bodybuilder off the air, Helen Trevino, Rising Phoenix Chan, Rising yeah. Phoenix Chan. Ah <laughs> oh, man, before we ask you any questions, the Hellcat. We're so um, what can I say? It's so refreshing to see uh, we started in 18 to follow female bodybuilding and promote it more. Mm -hmm. And wow, aren't you excited with Olympia, female bodybuilding back at the Olympia and your championship reign the, mm. the, the week before? How does this all, we're in the good times for female bodybuilding, hell, aren't we? We are in really good times. I mean, honestly, this has been like, Sport-wise, this has been like the best year ever mm. for me. Like, I'd say both personally and for the sport in a long time. It's like, it's been so many great news, like just all over the picture, you know, like um, getting into the Olympia is, of course, huge. But also we are seeing like really growth in the sport. We are really seeing numbers at the shows. We are seeing a lot of physique girls transitioning over. Mm. And, um, I mean, even like at goals where I'm training, you know, I have girls coming up to me and say, oh, I'm so inspired by you. I want to start competing again. Yeah. It was just Sarah Hayes. I don't know if you guys remember Sarah Hayes, Sarah Hayes Sarah for Hayes. like a few years back. Uh, oh, sorry. I think she had an eight year break or something like that. Okay. It's, uh, it's a while she competed in female bodybuilding and she was amazing and she just, jumped out and she came to me like uh just after the tampa and she said oh i'm so inspired by you i want to start competing again like i'm 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 coming back into competition and now she's like i think four weeks out and shred it she looks wow. amazing it's, it's just wonderful like to see so much new blood and to see the sport growing and you know that's what um keeps anything alive you know whatever product you have whether it's a sport or it's a soda or a clothing company if you don't have customers if then you know it's both the athletes and the audience that are the customers and we gotta have <laughs> yeah. Giles is crying to say something a yeah AJ how cool must that be to be the best in your category I and mean, to be training at the Mecca to come in like you know, like if you're a you know, Miss Olympia or Mr. Olympia, to be able to just walk back in and know that you're the best in the world in the mecca of bodybuilding. I just think that's, I just, it, when you said you're training at, the, you know, the, at Gold's Gym, it must be like really like, because we know that a lot of the bodybuilding is, you know, the, it's not as big as the mecca as it was, say, 20 years ago, but to be able to be a champion, you know, and then you've got like Sean Roden as well, all training in the same place. That must be so cool. But it, it really, really was special. I mean, when I won in 17, not really much happened, mm. you know, it's, uh, that wasn't really, it's a huge difference of these two wins mm. because in 17, it was like, Who can, it like, was yeah. almost like, ah, uh, any other day I came back. I mean, of course it's people that, you know, like your friends are like, Oh, that's awesome. And a few guys with goals that have been following, but this year it was like, everybody knew, like, everybody knew, everybody knew I won the car. Like I have like, mm -hmm. even still like, Yesterday, there was like four people at the gym asking me, how's the car, Hella? You know, how's the Hella cat? The Hella cat, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What's uh, uh, it, so it's it's much more focus on mm. it. And, you know, Gold's Gym didn't do anything in 17. This year, they put like a big uh, on the whiteboard. Yes. They wrote, welcome back, Hella Trevino, new world good, champion. Good. You know, it's we'll just the me. little things that are like, you know, it's respect, it's props, you know, yeah. like. You know, I, I honestly, I felt like a star coming back. I came back. I came in the helicopter, of course. I parked it right in front of the entrance of goals. And people were already lining up and looking at the car, you know. And nice. oh, it was, mm. I it, was it, it, out. And like, even like before I came into the gym, people were stopping me and I got into the gym. And that day I got absolutely nothing worked out. It was a little... <laughs> I said somebody would come up, hey, you but, know, it's no. awesome. You look the best ever. Yeah. And, 
you know, people have really been very positive a bit about the win, really like you're the future of female bodybuilding, you know, you're going to keep winning. And I mean, that's like really like believing in you, and, you know, but yeah. so I don't think I was as convincing in 17 that I was this year. 17 was good, Love but this condition. year I, I really, you know, sometimes I'll say it's good to lose, like, it's bad if you get slain down on it. But if you lose and you're like, like last year I dropped to fifth, that's a that's a hard blow. It's not just like I was second or anything, you know, yeah. just missed. What no, was the was result last year? Because we, we don't know. What was the results last year? Who got one to fifth? Who was it? Um, Alina Popa won. won. And Margie was second. And... Um, Monique? I know Nikki was fourth. Who was third? Monique? No. No, she wasn't in the show last year. Nikki Chartrun? I don't know. Yeah, Nikki Chartrun was fourth. Okay. Uh, so. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, sometimes my memory is. But the drop to. Oh, it was Sheila Black. Sheila Black, yeah. Oh, yeah. Female physique right now, isn't she? Uh-huh. Yeah. Switch. Yeah, she's in physique. I think mm. that's why I was just blanking out. Mm. But it was just... I'm just proud of myself because I went on Instagram the day after and I said, you know what? Either you win or you lose. And in both instances, you gain something. And yeah. I will... I promise you, I will come back bigger and better next year. Mm. And I made that promise. And sometimes it's good to make promises. I know it's also like it can be stress for some people. You go out and you say something. But, okay, if you fail, you, you say, I did my best, mm. you know. So I'm like, I was going to do my best to stick to that promise. And it worked out. You know, I was much bigger and much better, and and I really feel like I slayed. Oh, <laughs> what's so impressive about this is That's first of first of all, she was I can't say, but a lot of people might think girls in the Arab country are is a, with the gyms is a little bit different, but she went to Kuwait and guest post, wasn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Iraq, Iraq earlier yeah. this year to see that you lost your mother during the end of the year mm -hmm. to see the because we talked to a lot of competitors and some of them just if they if, if they if their phone bill is too high they drop out of shows mm -hmm. you lost your mom mm. and yeah. and came in at uh, i won't say advanced age but over at least you're not 25 and delivered the best package of all you have ever oh, done the condition was amazing condition. and and wow. the beauty did you see how she looks yeah. with it's just amazing and to top it off not only after you won to see you because we are very important for us who holds the title to see you do a cancer run a treat uh was it sand she did a she done a marathon yeah. for cancer oh wow it's for Jan St. Jude's Hospital. Yeah. Oh, kids. So you 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 are a role model, Hella, and that that's uh, mm, yeah, like uh, you are yeah. something special, brilliant, you know. Brilliant. Talk about the yeah. cancer run, the St. Jude. Uh, well, thing you did. You know, for me, I think just winning a title for me to really like be fired up about something, I have to have a higher purpose. Um, for me, just to compete and say, oh, thank you, that's a trophy, I'll go home, you'll see me next year. Mm. It, it's just, yeah, it's a personal win, but I don't have an influence in the world. You know, for me, it's like, I, I like to help people, I like to, you know, whether it's like you motivate someone to lead a healthier lifestyle, or you help kids with cancer, or, you know, whatever you kind of do, for me, it's a personal satisfaction, and I feel like winning gives me um, um, a voice. Mm. You know, mm. it gives me a different type of um, voice, and also you get, I think, more opportunities to partake in a lot of things. 
And I want to partake in a lot of things, you know, mm -hmm. as much as I can, especially here in the off season. I want to partake in as many things as I can to further the sport, to, um, you know, make it a better world. <laughs> you know, whatever. If we all just do our little thing, whether it's like saving whales or, um, you know, saving water, you know, and I'm just like, oh, here, I, I have a title. I'm the best in the world. Mm -hmm. I have a people looking towards me, what I'm doing, how I'm acting, and so forth. And I really do want to be a good role model for people to say, oh, okay, I also, maybe I should do some charity. And I actually have people after the St. Jude's run for kids with cancer that said, oh, you know, um, I actually used to do that. I think I want to get back into it. And, mm, you know, do it. like that. Mm. And, you know, we all affect each other. I believe a lot in energies. You know, positive energies, negative energies. Like, you know, when you go into a room, you can immediately always feel the energy. Yeah, is usually, it like, yeah, yeah. is it a dark? Is it a bad energy? Is the bad vibes? Mm. Or is everybody like, yay? You know. Mm. And I believe energies are really, really powerful. Mm. And I believe in um, just spreading the good energy. Um, you know, kind of just. I want to lead the way. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to be um, a role model, a leader that kind of leads the way in a in a good, positive uh, direction and, you know, trying to better each other, lift mm -hmm. each other so, rather than pull each other down. Okay. So obviously the announcement um, Bob Chick made at the Olympia. No, was it with Bob Chick that announced it? Was it was it Bob, Bob Chick. Chick. Yeah, it was yeah, Bob. Yeah, yeah, Bob Chick announced that the Miss Olympia is coming back. I think we had a we had a bit of a hint that it was coming back. Did you know? Sorry. From before? <laughs> I heard rumors. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I okay. think I think we all kind of guessed because I knew the sponsorship yeah. of the Olympia. I, I thought I said to AJ, I said like, you know, I think that's what they're angling for by sponsoring the Olympia this year. They want to get it back, so they're trying to. I had a feeling that was going to happen, so it was not a huge surprise, but it was a really nice thing to hear. You know, was the, it Friday or Saturday they said it? I again. can't remember. What I've, got, I've got it on my phone. I've, I filmed it. it I filmed was, it. Um, after I think it was after uh, just before the men's two twelve uh, uh, well, whatever I, well, I think it was for the prize um, they they announced uh, yeah. prizes for the men's bodybuilding mm -hmm. yeah yeah but it was it, it, but it was anyway it, it was really the way they did it was another thing like I truly believe in like when you are a sports star like whatever Serena Williams or, you know, um, me or, you know, whoever in different sports, you know, LeBron James, like that's like an extraordinary achievement. And I think you should, you deserve that respect that you worked hard for something for many, 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 many years. You sacrificed a lot for many, many, many years. Yeah. There was many years I made no money. I had three jobs mm. and I just tried to make time for the workouts in between the jobs. And, you know, me and uh, my boyfriend at the time, I remember we saved a whole year our money to go to FIBO to buy protein powder and supplements. That was oh, the wow. That went to that and we would even discuss like are we gonna get a it was in germany so it was kind of like a drive from denmark yeah. so uh and it was fever like three four days we would go there for the full amount of days and we would discuss are we gonna like sleep in the car are we gonna get a hotel because if we sleep in the car we can get that money that <laughs> much more supplements so Games. that makes yeah, like yeah, yeah. So protein yeah, yeah, yeah. that money and of course we slept in the car <laughs> could you not buy protein in america though or? denmark she lives in denmark oh remember. sorry rock <laughs> sorry yeah it was that was when i was back in denmark <laughs> I was you have to go to germany for that uh, <laughs> yeah so it's it's amazing how the sport has developed you know mm, like yeah. with everything like it's just um when they announced it for instance Bob said, oh, we got the new world champion 2019 here. Yeah. And he had to stand up. And like the whole audience, thousands and thousands of people were like applauding me. And I was like I waving. Saw you. I saw you. You, only, but you, were five, you were five rows in front of me, I think. I, uh, you know, yeah, I just felt like, yeah. I, 
felt like a star yeah. in that moment. And I would say in my entire career, I don't really think I felt like a star before. Oh, wow. Really, really. So now the Olympia. But, so now the Olympia. You know, I've been in my own country at the Danish Nationals, and they never even said, "Oh, we got a pro here." Yeah, know? but in Scandinavia, they're uh, soft. It, it's, Soft. Yeah, so there's you know, nothing to. Be like, oh, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so obviously, with the Olympic coming back, have you heard any sort of any 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 news about what how they're going to do, what they're going to do, what's you know, any plans or who's coming back or or what? Um, I heard. Um, there's a walk Yaxin comeback. That she would be back. Yaxin uh, is coming back. Uh huh. Yeah, she said that we had this event at the Olympia um, Champions and Legends where they invited all the winners through times from the Miss Olympia and from the Rising Phoenix, uh, they invited them and we had like a little stage appearance where they made some really nice videos of every athlete. Sean Ray was interviewing us. Mm. And um, so Yaxini said she would ba be back and Iris said she would be back if it was a business, like if they would give out like say hundred to $200,000. That's not going to happen. No, 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 no. They won't so, give out that. That will not happen, Helen. What about the car, though? Because that's the way they bump the prize money up, isn't it? Will yeah, they, but there won't be no 100,000. That's uh, what they did the Arnold, isn't it? That's impossible. That's never going to happen, eh, Helen? We'll see what the prize money is going to be like. I mean, I, you know, I'm very much, um, like, into, like, um, you know, gender equality. And I think it's a very big gap to have a four hundred thousand dollars for the men. Yeah. And when this Olympia, uh, was, but, yeah, but you can say yeah. the same about the two twelve. The two twelve gets fifty thousand, and the open gets half. I'm living on twenty thousand dollars. I can't say that's my year's salary. You know. No, but do you remember there is a big difference with the open and two twelve and men's physique. So yeah. it's not about gender. It's it's but I was. Yeah. Saying, they yeah, I took the prize money up this year for all categories. Yeah. Even yeah, yeah. Uh, men's physique they took all the price money up a notch so, what? so i wouldn't be surprised if it would be higher the price money next year yeah. but i mean how much they want to spit in i don't know hello um I, i've heard you know the rock show three weeks after the olympia i've heard that they're going to be having all categories that's what they've said does that do you know if that includes female bodybuilding as well or have you not heard yet because i don't think anyone really knows much about the show but they did state they would be having all categories so i don't know is that going to include female bodybuilding i don't know It'd be great if it was imagine having the olympia and then the, and then the rock show the rumors and i hear some people said they won't the first year and i've heard other people mm. said oh yes they will so you well, know. we've got the Olympia back, so and that's also, the main thing. What will be we the, got the Olympia back, and yeah. we're like, we'll take that. We'll take that. What will be the back. most prestigious, Hella? The Phoenix show or the Olympia? Because it's going to be a week apart. Which title will be the most prestigious? So they're having both. Yeah, they're not quitting the Phoenix Pro, are you? I think that's... No, 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 no. They, they're yeah. just going to... What I heard is they're going to move it. Oh! Yeah, they're going to move it a little bit because there's only one week in between. Yeah, you can't have I like two in, like, two world championships. So you're going to move the show, the date, or end the show? The date. The date? With two shows. Yeah, they'd have to. They couldn't have, like, the version that they've had for the Olympia, the world championships, mm. and then have the Olympia and have it a week apart. It wouldn't make sense. I just don't hope it's going to be like the Arnolds because, yeah. you know, um, no. I think that's another thing that could ruin the sport a little bit like if you want to do both shows in each yeah. uh side of the year yeah it's like you always have to be on prep you always have to going hard mm, that's not you good, know no. you, you can't have a, a break you know i like to take a break i took like i think almost three weeks off didn't train you know i let my no body normalize and just be a normal girl for a while and not mm. like all crazy with training and so so how, how does the qualification work how does the qualification work for this new for the olympia and how does it differentiate from the rising phoenix show what how, i mean because i know that other words were a qualifier for the rising phoenix so how does it work now do you know um i don't know what the qualifying criteria is right now i know that um jake was gonna talk uh with the um olympia committee about it at mm. the olympia i don't know what the outcome was right. how about mm. the qualifying criteria yet but 
Maybe it's something like the Arnold and Olympia or something. I don't know. Like if you, I know the top five is automatically qualified. Okay. Olympia. Well, we've got we've got Chicago, Toronto, and Romania. And Romania. So you've got three Olympia qualifiers there, surely. And then you'll have the Rising Phoenix elsewhere in the year. So there's four female bodybuilders. Well, there's a lot. There's um. Tampa. There's the Toronto. Tampa. 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 Five shows. Puerto Rico. Six shows. Yeah, there's mm. the Omaha. Oh, Seven. Oh, yeah, so you got more shows you than... Got, uh, Linda Murray's Norfolk Pro. Eight shows. So that's more than enough. Yeah, that's brilliant. So, that's brilliant. You know, I think there's going to be a lot of chances to qualify, and there's also the point brilliant. system. Brilliant. Mm. And whatever is going to be the most prestigious, I mean, it's hard. I mean... It's going to be hard, yeah. Oh. It's also because, you know, Olympia, it's like... It's just... It's more like a sports festival. You know, it's such a big weekend. Mm. So much things going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. You'll be a part it, of the show, but not maybe not the star of the show. When it's just, yeah, you're part of the show. Mm. It's, it's just, it's huge. Everything is just huge. The expo, the, um, there are so many activities where the Rising Phoenix, the female bodybuilders are the star of the show. Mm. There's only one category, and it's female bodybuilding, and we are treated like, Queens. Mm, mm. And also the terms of like prize money. If I win fifty grand and I win a hundred thousand dollar car, I can talk <sighs> with you. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, okay, I don't have to like bust my ass with three jobs anymore, mm. you know. I can say, you know what, I'm a pro now. Yeah. I'm a pro, I'm Hella, a pro. You, you make you make money on your sport and you make a living off of it. Hella, are you gonna keep so, are you gonna you... come up with twenty grand again? Mm. I do the Olympia too, and I would like to actually. I have a small goal that I'm going to tell you later, but I, it's a big goal. But <laughs> so, yeah, I will definitely do both. But it's like I have to think about making a living too. So I will never not do the Rising Phoenix. Mm. And also, I'm a very loyal person. And you know, when there was no one, that was Jake Wood and yeah. Wings of Strength. Yeah. And you know, if it hasn't been for Wings of Strength, this one happened. He mm. came out bodybuilding, we'll and there. he promoted it. And that was the mistake that they did uh, in the earlier days. If you don't promote a product, it's gonna go bankrupt. Yeah. And they promote female bodybuilding. It needs to be promoted. We need to be back on the front page covers. We need to be in the interviews. We need to be out and about. And that's why, like, every time I get an opportunity or an offer, I'm not going to say no mm. because I want to be out there promoting my sport, making sure that we are doing that promotion. And if <coughs> all the girls are doing it, and if we have an organization like Wings of Strength that's helping, putting some money behind, organizing. We had a booth at the FIBO, huge booth. We had a huge uh, booth at the Olympia. Mm. Uh, we had... Booths at every single show. I was at the Chicago Pro um, as an ambassador where they invited me to just sign autographs, meet and greet with fans. Mm. They have done so much, and that's key. You have to promote it. And that's why it's going so well right now. And I will never abandon them because I, that, I'm loyal and and they uh, they saved us. They they made sure the sport came to a rise again. Mm. So, hello, you've got a is the big goal is <laughs> I want to be the first woman in history that holds both titles. That'd be cool in the same year. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah in the same cool. year. Yeah. So you know, like they say, I'm the first Mister Physique Olympia or whatever. Yeah. You know, I'll be the first. Um, woman in history that holds both the Rising Phoenix and the Miss Olympia. Be like Brandon back. Curry then, Arnold Classic champion and Olympia champion then, but <laughs> hell, the Trevino style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Will you be in Romania in a month? Um, I don't know yet. I have to talk to uh, Wings of Strength uh, about the planning, so we will see. I hope to be there, um, but let's see what uh, if they need me there. I think they it do. would be nice to have a world champion there. Yeah. It's exciting. You should, you should yeah. come. You should come. You should, you we'll we'll should be go. there. We'll be there. We'll yeah, hang out. Be cool. Huh? Yeah, be you nice should to see come. everyone there. Yeah, come. Yeah, I would love it. Are you going to be there? We're going to be there and cover it for most development. Yeah. 
Oh, awesome. Maybe I can do the wrap up again. We did the oh, wrap yeah, 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 up yeah, last yeah. year. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was good. That was good. No, uh, we just wanted you on. We're a little bit short of time, but we wanted you on. Congratulations. What a fantastic so win. Brilliant. So far, you're a great representative, a great champion. Mm -hmm. And we're really looking forward to seeing you on stage next time. And to see the growth of female bodybuilding. And 100%. obviously, with announcement of Olympia, mm -hmm. we had to have the best female bodybuilding world on. <laughs> Ella Trevino. Yep. So thank Fantastic. you for coming on. Awesome. Thank you. I Ella. have um, one thing to finish off here that, that. I think... You you let us borrow your car. Oh. And I, um, the fans might enjoy. I'm going to take you on a little tour. Yeah. <laughs> take us to Trapper oh. Will. Ah, oh, she's going to lend us the car. She's going to uh, she's gonna lend us the car. Here. And um, <laughs> I think you can see the helicopter. Who's here also? It's the helicopter, the beast, the, the beast, the Batmobile, the Helimobile. <laughs> oh, that's ah. nice. <laughs> is that Camaro? No, not Camaro. Is it? What is that car? What, car? what is it? What is it? Oh, is that the actual name of it? Oh, wow! Hey. With the wings of oh, strength logo on it. It's a very sexy car. Wow, that's a great car. <laughs> that's Oof. so cool. <laughs> You're gonna keep this car, of course. You're not gonna sell it. I like that. Love it. Wow. Love it. Look at the number plate. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a transformer. You feel cool driving that car when you're the champion, eh? Yeah. And I, I know I should have washed it for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But Women's body. <laughs> Great. I wash it. Hello. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hello. You're very welcome. I just thought. Uh, you know, I would show off my. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We've seen the trophy. You know, it's like every time I look out my door and I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You would feel proud. Smile, and I'm like, yeah, I deserve this car because I worked damn hard for it, yeah. and it was uh, it was the most difficult year for me personally. Yeah. But it was the most successful year for me and the sport, um, sports wise. Mm. Fantastic. Thank you, Hella. Thank you, Hella. Thank you. We'll see, hopefully see Romania then. We'll see you in Romania, Hella. I'll do my best to be there. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye, Hella. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. I was, I was asking if she was going to sell the car. $100,000 $100, car. <laughs> not bad, not bad. What would you rather, that or an Olympic title? Uh, that, uh, the glasses with, with my name on it? Probably the car. No, no, no. What do you mean? Of course, stand out. But different. Female bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's bigger. No, yeah, yeah. It is. But for men, open bodybuilding, yeah, you can't get something better than the yeah. sandow. Yeah. I'll sleep with the sandow. I'll make love to the sandow. <laughs> I'll put it up on Tinder. Look at my sandow. <laughs> you got to get super don't, likes. Don't man. swipe right on the tan sandow. No. Yeah. Fantastic champion, Hello Trevino. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, yeah, what an what yeah. amazing year. A really good story to tell there. So big congratulations to her. And we hope to see you in Romania. Let's go. And we are out. out.